Welcome to a sparkling new podcast from Mike Parry and Mike Graham. We're the two Mikes. Actually, it sounds even better when you do it Dullsville, because when you try to be happy and excited and energetic, you sound pathetic. Thanks. This is Talk Sport Extra Time. We are the two mics. You can follow us at the two mics, of course, and it's that time of the morning when I'm delighted to say uh, a very good morning to Mr. Mike Porky Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. Yeah, very good morning, Mike. Great to be here. Very as, good as to you, see you. As, uh, what are you wearing, by the way? Um, do you Have know you got what? Pajama top on or something? Well, look. I'm not going to take offence at that. I mean, although you mean it's a very strange-looking shirt. Well, I say. I've never seen this shirt before. Really I don't know where it came before. from. Well, well I went did into you my... suddenly wake up and find somebody put it on you? No, 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 no. I went into my dressing room this evening. Your dressing for... room? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Does yeah. it have a star on the door? Does it say no, Mike no. Porky Parry? No, no. It's Keep my... out. No, it's it's the second bedroom in my penthouse, oh, yeah. but I use it as a dressing room, okay. and it's got a fold-out bed, a pull-out bed. Has so it? If anybody wants to come and stay. Hmm. Pull a bed out, but I mean, what is the point of having? Is this in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey? Yes, this right. is right. That's right Not yeah. down in Portsmouth, where you had to lock a second bedroom, which I wasn't allowed in. No, no, no it wasn't locked at all. You no, told it me it was locked. locked. No, no, it wasn't. I haven't got any locks on my doors. Really? I keep my doors open so that the circulation of air mm. goes around. They're very I, important. If I open the sliding doors for the balcony, the air, you know, uh, circulates mm. all around, yeah. keeps it um, pure and sweet. Yes. Um, no, the point is. There's no point in having a king-size bed in mm. the second bedroom no. that nobody ever sleeps in. It takes up too much floor space. True. So I have a... Oh, so you probably couldn't get it in anyway, because if it's quite a small room. No, you could. No, you could get really? it in. Oh, it's a big room. Is it? It's got an ensuite oh, bathroom. I know. I've never seen it. It's got an ensuite bathroom. Oh, great. Anyway... Is uh, that one working or is that one not working? Uh, that is, in fact, the one that's being converted into the <laughs> wet room, yeah. Right, OK. But that's so not... it's not working. Well, it, I don't want to talk about that at the okay. moment. OK, we'll catch up um, on that later in the week. Ex- exactly. Now, um, so what happens, is, what happens is, my housekeeper does all my washing and uh, ironing and mm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I go in there tonight in the sort of what you might call the dim evening. The gloom. The gloom, yeah. the gloom of the evening. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I just come out of the shower and all that. And I thought, oh, yeah, I thought I recognised your shirt, so mm. I just picked it up. So they're all hanging up, these shirts, Yes, are they? yes, hanging up on, yeah. on, in the wardrobe, Pressed. on rails. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, How many yeah, would you say like, you have? I've counted them, about yeah. 40. 40 shirts? Yeah. And you were having a go at old uh, Jennifer Lopez the yes. other night for having 200 pairs of jeans. But I want to get rid of some of them because I believe that the bar they hang on is going to break soon. Yeah. It sort of bows in the middle. Does it? Yeah, so I thought I'd better get rid of some. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so... You should get rid of that one. Well, I think I should. I don't like it. So anyway, I took well, it off. Why are you wearing it then? Well, because I put it on and then I sort of, you know, you didn't got dressed. What the it's just no. a green and brown affair. It's a really weird looking shirt. I've never seen it before in my life. Yeah. Don't know where it came from. Mm. And uh, this is the one and only time I'm ever going to wear it. Yeah. So it's, it's got quite a big collar as well, which is not very fast. Well, I just don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know who put this in my collection. Is this another one of your Italian shirts? No, it's not Italian at all, I don't think. I don't know where it comes from. Right. For all I know, it might come from. Kazakhstan. Well, you must have bought it at some no, point. No, I don't think I did it. I don't think I. I, I, I never remember buying this shirt. I never mm. bought this shirt. Really? Now, what was possibly, it a gift? Maybe? Well, that could possibly be it. Yeah. It could possibly be that um, somebody gave it to me as a present. At some stage, the housekeeper unwrapped it and put it in the wash and washed it. But it's the first time I've ever seen it. Mm. First time I've ever worn it. It'll be the last time I yeah. wear it. It's I simply... always say to people, look, if you want to buy me yeah. a shirt. Just buy me a white shirt. Yeah. You know, I don't want any kind of other kind why? of shirt. Why do you want a white shirt? Well, because you can never have too many white shirts, can you? you can uh, always... White shirts get filthy. Yeah, that's why you can never have I've too se- many. I've seen you coming out of an Indian curry house at two in the morning no, in a white shirt. And, 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 I mean, it's quite Absolute disgusting. Rubbish. No, you're making you it up. Like, look like you're a painted I once, decorator. I once, I once, well, don't try and turn it on me, right? No, no, you're the one no. wearing a horrible, crappy shirt, right? Yeah, well, it's the not shirt... my fault. I didn't buy this shirt. Well, you walked out wearing it. It's not my fault. You walked out wearing it. Listen, that doesn't matter. The point is, what right have you got to sit there and start dictating on what I wear and what I don't wear? Because it's a, we're you know, not, you're not exactly well, Yves Saint Laurent, are you? Yeah, well, I'm hey? not Yves Saint Laurent. No, no. I've got a very nice, no. uh, you know, shirt on here, which is not well, like a it's, bag it's, man. it's also doing something. Well, it's off the one of those shirts they would tell you not to wear on the television because it would do that funny thing with the stripes. Pixelate. Yeah, it would. It would, it would just no. It would sort of mesmerise people. Yeah, it would. Yeah. So because anyway, so, anyway, anyway, I was once anyway. bought a shirt by my sister, I think it was. Oh yeah. And she bought me one of these button-down American shirts, quite an expensive shirt. Yeah. But it was like four different colours. And it was the most ridiculous shirt you've ever seen. I've never worn it, right? Yeah. Because it's got, like, the top right-hand side is... It's like a jester's shirt. Right. But people, are, you know, it's the sort of thing you would wear if you were trying to make out you were eccentric. Sure. You know, uh, red on the top right, uh, yellow underneath, 
uh, blue on the top left and green on, yeah. the, on the, and, yeah. it, and then it goes all the way around the back as well. Is this to colour blind or something? I d- well, I don't know. I think yeah. you might be drunk. Would you? Um, it? What I most resent is, well, I, you know, sometimes I have shirts which are my favourite shirt, and yeah. I had one which was a royal blue and white stripe, uh-huh. beautiful shirt, yeah. basically royal blue, thin stripe. No, a thick black, a uh, thick, a, a thick uh, white stripe going through. It. Uh-huh. I love this shirt. It had a very bold collar and all yeah. that kind of stuff, you know. And so I hardly ever wore it because it's like my favourite shirt. You ever had one of those shirts with a white collar, like a coloured shirt? No, with a no, white no, collar? no, 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 no. I mean, Dreadful. That wouldn't suit you Dreadful. at all. And anyway, a right plonker. what happened was, I, uh, when I was wearing it... <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of this shirt and send it yeah, out. Yeah, all right, yeah. I, I don't mind. I, I feel a fool in this shirt, and I yeah. don't mind well, being it's held up fitting, as a fool. Really, isn't it? No, it's not fitting at all. I meant the shirt. Anyway, my favourite shirt, for some unknown reason, I was wearing it when I went into a dry cleaners yeah. and put some other clothes in. And the guy gives you a little yellow ticket. Yeah. And stupidly, I put it in the pocket of the shirt mm. and then forgot about it. So when it when it went into the wash, mm. the yellow ticket just bleached that part of the shirt oh, yellow. No. Oh, it was ruined, That's completely terrible. ruined. And, and I tried everything to get the yellow out. Mm. You know, I soaked it. I got the uh, vanish is the stuff that you yeah. put in. I, I I put it in the bath and and jumped up and down on it for ages. You know, to see if I could. <laughs> That's not no, work. no, literally knock the um, the colouring out, and mm. nothing happened. So you know, in a sense, I, I resent that. But anyway, there we go. Yeah, we should be I? talking about. We should be talking about. Um, we should be talking about Harry Redknapp. Shouldn't Harry we? Redknapp. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, are you one of these that doesn't believe his story? Uh, I believe Harry more than I don't believe Harry. I think he's a very honest man. I think he's an honourable man, an honest man. Mm. Um, But I would say that um, even before all this happened, looking at the... Well, I mean, he he rang Tony Fernandes at 5.30 this morning. The news didn't break until this afternoon. But I was intrigued by a piece I read in this morning's Times by Oliver Kay. Fernandes points finger. It says the sight of Harry Redknapp rolling down his car window chatting never happened yesterday. But Mr. Fernandez is your statement saying no more checkbooks. Tony Fernandez, the QPR chairman, wrote on Twitter yesterday we have good players, bought all the players the manager asked for in the summer. Our players um, are not mercenaries, good guys. If something interesting comes up, we'd look at it. But um, not optimistic. Given the right motivation, tactics, and coaching, we can achieve much more. Right. Well, Harry said today, or yesterday yeah. now, uh, that he was pretty sure before the January transfer window even started, mm. some while ago, that there wasn't going to be much business being done by QPR. So it's not as if he's suddenly gone, oh, Oh well, now we didn't buy any players. No, I'm no, going to walk away. No, but Oliver Kay is 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 hinting very broadly here mm. that you know Fernandez has made a critical comment. And anyway, look, just by the by, point is that of course he's got. Um, now I've had knee ligament trouble, as oh, you yeah. know. Let's talk about your M- knees. Medial, so, medial ligament knee. So problems. you're going to be making this about you again? Well, I'm just telling you, it is it is cru- excruciatingly painful. Well, well you've had gout. It is crippling. Right? You've had gout. Yes. You've had uh, you've walked with crutches quite yes. frequently because of the problems you've had. Yeah, I've so, had. So how did you did you have to have a knee operation? No. Uh, I had a broken metatarsal uh, just before I had the medial ligament yeah. uh, problem in the knee. The way I got rid of it was... Did you get that falling down a cliff? No, I didn't get the falling down a cliff, no. In f- and funnily enough, I got my broken metatarsal from jumping off a cliff. In co- well, not jumping off a cliff. In, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in Cornwall. But I was on a, walking on a cliff and I jumped from one level to yes. another level two feet away. Right. You see what I mean? Yeah. And as, uh, as, Very my, dangerous, yeah. as my dainty foot hit mm. the ground, I mm. heard the crack. Oh, no, no, I've done my knee. I've uh, done my uh, foot. But um, the metatarsal is incredibly painful. Yeah. Um, and what the, the consequence of it is you can't put any pressure on your yeah. leg. Right. And, and it is debilitating yeah. and you need two crutches, right? Well, I've read Martin Sam's speech yeah. he said he, couldn't, he literally couldn't walk more than 50 yards. He had to get a yeah. taxi down Park Lane. Yeah, that's right, from Gro- the Grosvenor House to the Dorchester, yeah. you know. But the the point is, point is, point is... Um, I imagine you've probably gone on that route, haven't you, from the Dorchester to the Grosvenor House? Yes, I have, actually. Yeah, right. I have, yeah. yeah. In, a, in, a, in a state where you might have needed a taxi. No, 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 not at all, but I, I have made that route. Now, the only other thing I was going to say is this. I believe that Harry... <laughs> Harry Redknapp, to me, is a very honourable man. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I don't think uh, he would uh, tell an untruth. And I think the, the knee problem is the major factor, the major factor in in him deciding to give a QPR. But can I just add this? Mm. I think Harry Redknapp has been very badly uh, done to in the world of football over the last few years. Yeah. Firstly... When he was... Is this when, going to be a long story, by the no, way? Because the no, time is no, upon Don't worry us. about the time. I just worry about the time. Me. I am worried the about the time. The audience are more interested in what I'm saying than the clock, OK? Just, no, they're not. Just let, no. just let me well, tell you that. the producer's not more right, interested Right, OK, OK. What you've got to For say. five years, he carried the shadow of this um, tax inquiry... Yes. And ..to which he was found to be blameless yeah. and, 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 and never guilty of anything, right? But he had to carry that with him. During that time... He succeeded magnificently at Spurs, mm. only for Spurs to really 
not appreciate what he'd done at the end of it yeah. and show him the door. Yeah. That that would that that would hurt and, mm. and, and you'd carry resentment at the those, same time. Those those who would defend yeah. Spurs in that scenario would say that that was because of his kind of lack of loyalty and, and his wish well, to go and get the England job. Well, I mean, you know, you have uh, divergent loyalties in football. Yeah. Nevertheless, he did a very, very good job for Spurs. He did. And also, he was the people's favourite to be the England manager. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that was snatched away from him. So I think he's been badly treated by areas of the football world. Yeah. And I wouldn't blame him if he still harboured, you know, some resentment to the way football's turned on yeah. him in those two situations. Yeah. And therefore, just said... I've had enough. Mm. I, I wouldn't. Although well, he, he does say he's coming back, yeah. and, and I think he will come back. But I think he said, "I'm not being messed around again." If he thought he was being messed yeah. around, and if he thought he had to make excessive efforts to get over a crippling physical problem, yeah. and he is 67 after all, so yes. it might be time for him to retire. We're going to talk about retirement coming up a little bit later on. Absolutely, uh, on yeah, the we show. are. Yeah. Not your retirement. I want to hear about retirement. you going to Birmingham as well. Yeah, I want to tell you the story about make sure how I was that you've killed got everything by, right there. by a rogue lorry driver. For heaven's sake, well, frightening. This is Talk good. Sport. We are the two mics. Loads more to come. This is Talk Sport Extra Time. I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry. We are the two mics. At the two mics is uh, where you look for our podcast, of course. That will be coming out around about 8 o'clock, uh, 8.30 uh, in the morning. Earlier uh, and earlier. Later on, earlier and earlier. Getting yeah, very the boys here uh, are right on top of the game yeah, now. Absolutely right on top of the right game. On top of the game. Mm. Now, I've just tweeted out that uh, offending uh, picture of you in a shirt uh, yeah. on uh, IR, at IROMG, and we'll retweet okay. it out on the I two mics. I didn't resist it, because I thought if I resist it, then mm. you'd tell all the listeners that I was ashamed of the shirt yeah. and all that. I'm not. It's not it my is. shirt. I, t- I want your views on the I think it might have been made from a pair of curtains, actually. Is it made of at least cotton, for heaven's sake? It's yeah, of course like it's made of cotton. Things, it? Don't be ridiculous, yeah. it's made of cotton. But what I mean, size just... is it, by the way? I don't know. Well, what size shirts do you wear? Well, I don't know. It's we quite don't big. know. Well, I don't know. How do you I don't not know what size you because wear? Because I, d- I don't know whose shirt this is. It is it a seven? What, you think it might be somebody else's shirt? Well, I don't, if it's somebody else, I don't know what's there? doing in my wardrobe. It's, anyway. possible, it's possible that uh, that it came back from the dry cleaners and maybe somebody else's shirt got mixed up with yours. It's never been dry cleaned. Never been dry clean. No, no, it's been washed by my housekeeper, and right. I'm by my housekeeper. Right. And she's put it then in the place where all the shirts go. So I've no idea where it came from. Mm. You know, it's something that's a mystery. But they'll have it to remain a mystery. Horrible. Now, what about, your, what about well, your trip back from uh, Birmingham? Well, uh, yeah, trip back from Birmingham. I mean, First of all, to, what uh, are you doing in Birmingham? Right, me and the executive producer of the Two Mics live show, oh, yeah. Mr. David Levine, decided oh, yeah. to pop up to the uh, to the Birmingham Repertory Theatre, uh, where you've already been to set up the show. Uh, excellent. Uh, we've, we've sold it mm. out, uh, I think. Uh, there may be some tickets available as we get closer to the date, but we're trying to negotiate that as we speak. But at the moment, there's no more tickets to go. And I just wanted to go and have a look at it because it's a massive theatre and a massive complex and a, and a beautiful place. Tis. And I just wanted to kind of work out a few little niceties, um, which, uh, which which he and I sorted out, a few yeah. technical things. Make you know. sure the stage is reinforced. Make sure the stage is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, very good, yeah. See if fell for that one. Well, actually, to make sure that, that the audience are not low yeah. enough below the stage yeah. so that when they look up, they can still see you because obviously you're not very tall. Ooh. So just, you know, working out a few of those types of niceties, which yeah. I know that uh, yeah. you don't trouble yourself yeah. with. You know, you just turn up and expect... Are we going to have a... Electronic microphones. Uh, I'm hoping so. Yes, right. we should have uh, radio mics, which means Excellent. that you could walk around without having to trip over um, the wire, you know, like yeah. I do. If you didn't have an electronic microphone, what kind of microphone would you prefer? Well, like a wire microphone. A wire microphone. Yeah. Well, isn't that also electronic? No, because the sound goes down a wire, Tell so us. it's not electronic, is it? Isn't it? You fool. How's it not electronic? Well, because it's not. I mean. OK, so do you call a guitar with a lead an electronic guitar? No, electric guitar. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's not an electric mic, because it doesn't electrify you, right, or electrocute you. Well, it's not so meant to. No, well, it's, it's not electronic. It's a, you can get an electric heater, it doesn't electrocute you either. No, 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 but that's not electronic, you is it? You get an electric car, also doesn't electrocute you. Electronics are different to electric, OK? So an electric guitar is not an electronic guitar. What would you call all the things we've got? Is this computer electronic? Or yeah, of course it is. Or electric? Yeah, of course it is, yeah. What about an electric blanket? Why are we talking this nonsense? Because you I asked want to for know what you were doing mic- in Birmingham. Because you asked for an electronic microphone. No, 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 yeah, yeah, that's what I want. I right. want a, you know, a microphone that doesn't have a cable. I'll a put cord, a special request a on lead. the rider yeah. uh, to say, can Mr. Parry have an, an electronic microphone that doesn't electrocute him, please? Right, now then, what's about our dressing room? Uh, I'm well, there's in a the bit of an issue room. with the dressing room, apparently, Why? because Why? we've got, uh, there's, another promo- there's another production going on, uh, and we're in well, one on of the... the night. Uh, uh, in the same night? On the same night, yeah. Are you telling me that we have to share a dressing room with somebody? We may have to share a dressing room, but they're currently what? working on that. Well, you might not mind it. You might, you know, you like hanging out with thespians, don't you? There, there's some kind of play going on. Depends who the thespians are. Yeah, well, I don't know whether there are any mates of yours from uh, uh, from the football world. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, 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 we'll bring you an answer back on that. But there's certainly a green room where we can repose oh, okay, uh, that's before good. the show. And have you ordered the, you know, the things I require before the show? Yeah, we've ordered uh, a case of Pinot Grigio. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't say a case. I just had a bottle. I said just two tipolators yeah, yeah, well, before yeah, we get but, on stage. Uh, yeah, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be doing all of and that. And also... I mean, I didn't go there to make sure that your, surf- and, your, your surplus to require 
requirements, alcohol levels a bo- would be a boosted. Bowl, a bowl of mixed chewing gum, because I like to um, a get A bowl my, of mixed chewing gum? I like to get the mastication, um, you know, what glands going. What sort of mixed going. chewing gum do you want? Oh, well, you know, I like, I like it with different flavours, like orange chewing gum, lemon chewing gum. All right. Ordinary Wrigley's chewing gum and all that kind of stuff, you know, because okay. it's good. All Keeps right. your mouth. Um, well, they pops in a pick and mix uh, on the way up there before. I mean, I hope you've got all these. Were not, these were not the important mm. things, mm. right? The important things were the, tech, the technical aspects of lean things, ham, lighting. like a bit of lean ham. You're not going to get any ham. Well, we're having a break. This is a show. It's a two-hour show with a break in the middle. I yeah. want some lean ham in the middle. You want some lean I, ham? I, I told you all this before you went. You know, have you no. not done anything about no. it? That's got nothing to do with why I was there. Okay, Phew. I'm not yes. there to service your needs, right? If you yeah. want somebody to be your slave, you can employ someone to come and be your bag carrier, and that'll be. Fine. Yeah. Sorted out a hotel for you, I think. Uh, so that will be fine. Excellent, yeah. and, a, and a, a room for the party afterwards. Yeah, for the uh, yeah the after show party, yeah. as you rather yeah. laughingly call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you call it then? Well, it's not going to be a party, is it? Why? It's somewhere to go. Well, well hang on, hang on. It this sounds very be... pretentious when you start saying, "Oh, it's going to be an after show party." Hang on, wait a minute. There's Who's going to be invited to you this after show party? There's going to be our assistant Emma, your daughter. Yeah. It's going to be our executive producer Dave. That's four already, right? Right. There's well, going to be better get a massive room then. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's going to be half a dozen people there from Talksport, right? And Are there? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be all my well, local. Invite all those, are you? Yeah, yeah, all my local Midlands mates. You oh, know, remember I used to work on the Birmingham Evening Mail. Well, no, you... I was a star on the Birmingham Evening Mail. They still remember me there. No, I bet they you do. You know, the halls, still, the halls of the Birmingham the, Evening Mail still, still echo. Still paying the legal still, bills. Still echo with the sounds they'll, of. No, they'll still be playing the legal bills. Still echo with the sounds of of that young reporter Mike Parry sprinting down the corridor and setting off on another worldwide mission with his typewriter to, uh, to seek uh, truth and justice. Well, that yeah. may well be. If you want to organise yeah. that, that's entirely down to you. It's nothing to do with me. I'm not a party to that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what happened was on the way back, you right. know, because we. We drove up straight from here this morning. It was snowing like uh, like hell, by the way, when we left here That's this terrible. morning at six o'clock. And I thought it's typical, isn't it? The and one it's day all the way to Birmingham. No, it stopped somewhere like Buckinghamshire, but Excellent. it was beautiful. It was very white. We're on the M40, I take We're it. We're on the M40, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was beautiful. The, the snow, you know, a lot mm. of snow on the ground, very mm. nice. But coming back, mm. you know, we ended up deciding to come back on the M1 because we were coming into North Bad London. Bad decision. Well, I wouldn't have normally done that, but you know, I did it because that's okay. where the producer uh, needed to be dropped off, and it was a quicker way into London anyway. Yeah. But they've got that horrible stretch, just as you get on the M1, where it suddenly goes down to 50 miles an hour. They narrow the lanes, and you Shopping. know, there's a, you know, what do, what do they call that? Uh, constant speed camera monitoring and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. Average the, speed cameras. Average speed right? cameras. Yeah. And of course, one of the, I'd remembered why I didn't like the one there's always a lot of lorries on it and uh, the lorry driving I have Terrible. to say uh, was absolutely some of the worst I've ever seen and there was this one Shocking. particular guy driving a, a big articulated lorry 18 yes. wheeler and uh, uh, he was refusing basically to, to keep to the speed limit you know what sometimes these lorry drivers are like um, are they so supposed the, to go maximum 50 well when you're in a 50 mile an hour zone oh, of course you know, the speed yeah, limit yeah, yeah, applies to yeah. everybody the same yeah, yeah. I, bizarrely I've been having a row with some guy uh, mm. who says he drives for a living mm. uh, accusing me of being a middle lane hogger saying well a lot of the lorry drivers don't think that applies to them yeah, exactly I'm like, well, why does it not apply but to also, them? if you go more than 50 in an average speed zone, you're yeah. going to get done for speeding well, that because... Was, that was my problem. You, you will. Yeah. I mean, you absolutely will. Well, that was my problem. And there was a lot yeah. of traffic, and so the traffic was all moving generally at the oh, same was this, speed. Was this lorry behind you? He was behind me. So it was a bit like that Steven Spielberg thing. Yeah. What's well, it when, I looked in the win- when I looked in the yeah. mirror... You know, all I could see was the grill of this lorry. That's what I mean. Right? That's terrible. And when you can't see the headlights, you know they're too close, right? Yeah. So what was that film called? I'm, I'm not sure what it oh, was. Oh, come on. What was it called? Because this guy, he was on a, a, a junction, a railway junction crossing, yeah. and the lorry started nudging him onto the rails and all that. It was oh, a yeah, terrifying I remember that. film. That wasn't was Christine, called? was it? That was the one about the car. No, no, no. But this was this was the first film Steven Spielberg ever made, mm. and it was so terrifying. Stephen King. Hey? Do you not mean Stephen King? No, Stephen Spielberg. Really? Yeah. And and the, the, the only time you saw identity for the driver was mm. when the lorry door opened. Of course, yeah. it's about six feet off the ground. And then you just saw this pair of cowboy boots uh-huh. coming down and leaping to the ground. I'm told the name of the film is Jewel. Does that sound Jewel. right? Jewel. Yeah, Jewel. No, D-U-A-L. Not Jewel as in jewellery. Duel as in Jewel, a yeah. duel. That's what yes. It says. Yeah, well, obviously. That's right, yeah. Yeah, it was. And I tell you, uh, and they ne- we never found the identity of the yeah. of the maniac uh, lorry driver. Anyway, no. please go on. Presumably, Jewel is G- D U E L, isn't it? D U D U A L is. Oh yeah, yeah. Too. Sorry, Jewel is Jewel carriageway, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. But you're that's right, all, right. obviously that's in your mind. Yes. Anyway, so this guy mm. was getting closer and closer to me, quite dangerous, right? But I couldn't go anywhere because there was somebody in the yeah. right hand lane. And you shouldn't have gone anywhere. Somebody, shouldn't have been intimidated. And somebody in the left hand lane, right? So I was just, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to speed up because I was doing fifty, yeah. and I was like, well, I'm not going to get a ticket. So he just kept getting closer and closer. He started flashing his light. At me, and I'm like, well, I don't know where it's I can go. I don't know what you want me to do. Could you not have gone into the left lane no. or the right lane? No, because there were cars in both, yeah, on
So the next thing I know, he, he sort of pulls he sort of violently to the left and starts trying to pass me on the left. But yeah. there's another car literally just ahead of me. So he's, he's, he's like racing up behind that car now to try and get past me. But as, he's, amazing. as, he's, as his cab is kind of just about level with the front... Do you know which company of, this, this... Yeah, uh, TNT. The, uh, the distribution company. Yeah, it was TNT, the distribution company. Yeah. And as he got level with, with the front of my car... Yeah. Um, uh, he's, he started honking his horn again, and he started putting his indicator out as if he was going to pull out into my lane. But I'm thinking, well, if you pull out into my lane, you're going to hit me. Right? Exactly. Guy's so, mad. So I'm thinking, what do I do now? Mad so lorry driver. I thought, well, I can't speed up anymore. Uh, the guy in front of him isn't going to speed up anymore. If I'd have been you, I'd have braked and, and put distance between me and him yeah. in different lanes. Well, to be honest, I didn't know what I was going to do next. No. You know, and I no. couldn't move right. You should have thought a bit faster about this one, Mike, no, well, really. I couldn't, no, I couldn't move right to get out of his way. Yeah. So, you know, I just kept going. So he then slammed his brakes on, moved behind me again, mm. and then suddenly. Uh, there was a space for him to move out to the right. So he, so he goes in the fast lane. He swung around me on the right into the fast lane. But then, and this was the bit that got really dangerous, instead of just passing me, mm. he then, uh, as he was passing me, started to move back into the middle lane with the, with the, rear, the rear end of his truck basically about to hit my car. What which was, was this doing, guy all about? He was obviously doing it deliberately to intimidate me, by yeah. which time I had put my foot on the brake slightly and yeah. I, I had to move over into the side, into the slow lane in mad. order to let him go. And he then, yeah. as I moved back into the middle lane behind him yeah. to overtake the guy who yeah. was in the side lane, uh, he slams his brakes on. You know, in so an you could have run to the back of him? So I could have done that, yeah. Well, listen, you had a passenger in the car, the executive producer. Yeah. Why didn't you get him to ring the police well, at that point? we thought about that, and then we said, right, we're going to report this guy to TNT. Yeah. Then, that was when we noticed that he had no rear number plate, no registration plate on the back of his truck. I mean, I wonder if this man was a rogue lorry driver. Well, he was a, some, some kind of rogue lorry driver. So I said, well, I think what we ought to do is let him get away, mm. uh, because, you know... But then he was doing it to the next car up ahead. I mean, he wasn't just Sounds doing it to me. to me. He was undertaking people. He could have been people. one of these guys, you know, might have had a television in his cab, might have been watching television. I don't know at the same doing. time. I don't know what he was well, doing. Well, you had a responsibility a to Absolute society to, to report this man to well, the police. We reported How do you him? know by now well, he might not have killed well, somebody on we, that journey? Well, here's why we didn't report him to the police, right? because as we were about to try and catch up with him, and uh, maybe uh, uh, because there's a 50 Get in front of him and find the number zone. plate. Yeah, because I didn't want to go above 50 in the 50 mile no, an no, hour No, no, I don't blame you. But we got to the point where the 50 mile an hour zone ended, and I thought, well, I can now speed up a bit and I can catch him and get his front number plate. But unfortunately, he then went off, he took off, and you wonder whether he did that deliberately at the Northampton exit. It, exit 16. I see. We reported him on Twitter to the uh, uh, TNT people and they said they were going to investigate. Uh, we told well, them exactly. Well, they came back to you. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. How did you find the TNT? Well, uh, that was our executive handle. producer's, uh, uh, you know, nows. Excellent. But the reason I didn't call the police was so because. So you did get the number in the end? No, we didn't. So how, how? So what were you reporting? A T N T. We were reporting a T N T lorry with its location, where it went off. Bit vague. Well, we didn't have any other. We didn't yeah. have anything else. Um, but they they have trackers on these trucks, so they'll be able to find him. Right. Sure. But the reason why we didn't call the police, and I'll tell you why this is an even more chilling story, right. is because he wasn't the only driver driving, you know, badly and and recklessly. Mm. On the other side of the motorway, going north, yeah. there was a massive crash. Right. And there was just no, as, hang, just oh, I see going just north as, yeah, going yeah. north just yeah. as we just as we yeah. just as this guy took off and there was a lorry which had jackknifed and yeah. uh, there were two cars that had been smashed there, right. was, there was an air ambulance that came and the, the whole my thing god was the helicopter helicopter Did you came. see the helicopter swooping in no we heard it later it's like um, Rambo isn't yeah, it yeah you know, police everywhere through, and, yeah. and clearly mm. you know what happens is on these uh, situations when there are lots of lots of cars together in very small spaces these lorry drivers are driving like idiots and mm. they're going to kill somebody oh yeah and something has to be done about it yeah something should be done about it yeah and, and I think you had to respond Responsibility to make more of a protest than you did today. I think you've let society down. You know, you claim to be a highly intelligent individual. Yeah. It's your responsibility to well, note these social yes, trends yeah. and get busy with them. Yeah, well, I haven't you know, finished not yet. To, not to just wash you your hands of me. it and say it's somebody else's you know, problem. You know me. It's your problem because you know you're Mr. a Parry. member of society. You know me, Mr Parry. Mm. And once I get my uh, teeth into somebody, they don't get uh, let go. Okay, so, so, this guy, so you haven't finished The story hasn't finished yet. yet, yet. The story oh, has okay. not yet finished. We are the two Mikes. I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry. Loads more coming up. Ice Ice Baby. I tell you what, I like that. And I didn't know it was called Ice Baby, but I've heard that record over the years. Well, it used to be in an advert, all that kind of stuff. In discos? Yeah, I'm sure I've heard it. Well, you don't know it from that silly advert that they used to do for the Halifax. Well, it might be. But anyway, look, the reason that. uh, Hang on, before you go on with your ice story, I've got lots and lots of uh, tweets about your shirt. Okay, yeah. I think we should read them out. Complimentary. Uh, Of course, to Mike Parry8 at IROMG, at the two Mikes. Mm. Uh, A lot of people say it needs to be ironed. Luke says it needs to be ironed. It's been ironed. Scott says, nice tent. Uh, one from Woodenhead who says sent. he looks like a barcode. Um, he looks like a barcode. Uh, here's I another agree. one from someone who says, has Parry just finished a shift in Waitrose? <laughs> Waitrose, uh, which is yeah, good. yeah. And a couple true, of people yeah. have sent in pictures of deck chairs yeah. uh, to say that basically uh, it looks as if you're wearing a deck chair. Uh, it looks um, as big as a deck chair. One, uh, one particular one says uh, that it looks like a deck chair with a beard. Um, um, 
Uh, you see, I didn't really want to wear this shirt. I wore it by mistake. So I don't mind taking all the um, stick and the flack. Mm. Because if I... Thing is, Mike, see, I'm not like you. If if I suddenly decided that I got offended by all this flack and stick that the right. listeners are giving me, um, that would show that I am, in fact, a man of no taste, no judgment, and has no bottle and no ability to well, self mock What I don't understand is why, having realised that it was yeah. a bad shirt, because, I mean... I didn't. All, I didn't realise it was a bad shirt. I what, put until it, you got in here? No, because I put, I put well, it on. Have got any lights on in the house or mirrors? Yeah. No, no, I've got oh, no I mirrors. Know. I no, know. I've got no mirrors. No, you look in the mirror and you no. see Brad Pitt wearing a beautiful dinner suit. No, right? no, no. That's what I, you see. No, I didn't, I didn't look in the mirror. I put the shirt on. I think you should look in the mirror before you come out. I, I put the shirt on. I didn't look in the mirror. And then I put my leather jacket on over it so I couldn't see it. Leather me. jacket? My leather jacket, what do you think yeah. you Jeremy Clarkson? No, 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 no. I wear the leather jackets in the winter because they are the best possible form of protection against the cold. <laughs> Why... Well, hang on, hang no, on. They're not. Yes, they are. Why what about do you, coat? Why do you think the German panzer divisions who went to conquer Russia all wore leather overcoats? What's it got to do with them? Because it's very, very cold in Russia in the winter they when wore, you're trying to they wore invade overcoats. Moscow. They and, wore overcoats. Sorry? They wore coats. And they wore leather overcoats. They all wore leather yeah. overcoats, yeah. yeah. But not leather jackets. No, no, but they wore leather overcoats. It keeps the cold out, I'm mm. telling you. Yeah, well, it why do you think well, cows are made of leather? <laughs> because no, it's be, it's be, it's because it's the best thing against the cold. Cows live you. in cows don't live in very cold temperatures. Cows do sometimes. If well, you're, if you're have a, you ever seen a Highland cow? Uh, seen a Highland cow? Yeah, they live in cold temperatures. They have got big horns. How would you describe their fur? Uh, woolly, shaggy, woolly, yeah, woolly. Because That's they're in cold temperatures. Yeah, but, yeah, but how about but yaks? Yeah, but it, it, it's wool. Gro- it's wool growing off leather, isn't it? Well, it's not leather at all. Of it's a skin. Leather. I'm talking absolute cobblers. What do you think a cow's hide is? It's leather. It's not leather, it, it is it? It is. It it's is. Not a leather cow's... until you've made it into uh, leather. Yeah, but a cow's hide is is of the same constituency of leather. It's got to be. I wish you'd go and hide. Well, hang on. Where else do we get leather from then? Come on. I'm not letting yeah. you go with this one. Where do you get leather you get from? get leather from a cow. Why do you think whenever you go to Spain and you walk through a market you also get milk or something, from a cow, all you, can, all you can get smell milk. is hang leather, on. leather, leather, because right. they've got well, lots of well, all like, I can hear is and you cows and shouting things. the same thing, but you get milk from a cow, you don't say it's made of milk, do you? Well, of course you don't. Or is it made of cheese? Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's a cheese cow. Look. Don't be utterly oh, look, ridiculous. It's got a leather coat on and it's made of cheese. Uh, I'm not I'm not going in this conversation. Right. Let's We're talk t- to Steve, who's a truck driver on the M1, because okay. I bet you he's got a story, a story for us. Yeah, Steve, good a very one. good morning to you. Can you break me out of this madness, please? Yeah, mate, how's it going? Nice yeah. show as always. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you very you, much yeah. indeed. What would you like to tell us? Um, I'm just saying, mate, I understand about the. Um, well, the drivers on the M1. Mm. I'll come down that road every day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always doing a Darford run, and it's a nightmare. That 50 mile an hour bit is awful, isn't it? Well, I'm in it at the minute. I'm going northbound back to Canic. Oh, right, OK. Because mm. mm. it was close. So, Did you, you weren't there when they had that big crash going northbound earlier, were you? No, nah, luckily enough, I heard it on the radio and went down the M40, thanks to TalkSport. Mm. Yeah, good man. Um, I I'll... mean, obviously, you know, there are plenty of lorry drivers that mm. are very res- uh, responsible, but there are some who, for some reason, don't think that speed limit applies to them, and they chase up uh, behind cars. And, and I'm getting a lot of messages from some lorry drivers saying, oh, well, the biggest problem with car drivers, you know, who hog the middle lane mm. and who stay at the same speed limit. But that's what they have mm. to do. What, mm. Why do they think they can get away with it? Well, I have no idea, mate. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I work for DHL, a very mm-hmm. decent company that's got trackers and cameras and everything. And if I'm turned out to be doing stuff like that, then I'm sorry, I'll be out of a job. Yeah. yeah. Well, how, how can so, you explain that he wouldn't have a rear registration number? How would that work? He might, he might have forgot to just put it on. Right. Or he's just being a total idiot. Mm-hmm. Well, well, because... Was, uh, because... If you're pulling different trailers, you have to sort of uh, change the number plate, do you? So, yeah, yeah, so it coincides it. with the the, ca- the uh, truck that's pulling it. I see. That's fine. Yeah. What is the what are the state of the roads like in this country, Steve? Because I'd like to build another ten thousand miles of roads in this country. They don't do much damage to the countryside. It's against the interest of the economy not to have good roads. What's your view? Perfectly honest, mate. We need some good roads in this country. Of course we do. We need more roads. Well, we need... not, not if you're not going to teach people how to drive. No, well, I, I, yes, but what I'm saying is more roads mean less congestion. Mm. Therefore, people get less frustrated. Therefore, nutters don't get the opportunity to be nutters. And uh, and the whole world would improve. Steve, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Steve, hang on. Well, excuse me, Sorry? one more question, Steve. Yeah. Um, do you know where the TNT distribution depot is, by any chance? 
Yeah, it's in Northampton. Mate. Oh, is it? That's where well, he was getting go. off. He was off too. He was off. That's where he was getting off. Yeah, that's why. That's why the, his employers mm. will never find him then, because yeah. there must have been dozens of TNT no, we'll vehicles we'll going off, him. going off at that junction. We'll find him. Um, well, no, no the... if you if you actually get the the time of him getting off at the uh, junction, the tracker will pick him up. Yeah, should do. Should do. Superb. Okay, Steve. Steve well done, thanks Steve. very much. Indeed. I'm sorry that uh, um, Porky once again uh, uh, seemed to monopolize that conversation. No, 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 it is. Asked him one question. Asked him one question. Yeah, about you. No, no, not about me. I just said we need more roads. We well, we need about that. another ten thousand miles of roads in this country. Well, not if you're going to drive us like that on them. As I've told you before, the reason that hardly anybody in this country has ever been to Norwich is because there yeah. is not a motorway that goes out well, to East Anglia. That's Anglin, been disproved. To Norwich. It hasn't been disproved. It, it, I'm, it's a fact of life. In fact, behind the glass there, uh, yeah. next to our executive producer is yeah. a man who's from Norwich. Really? Yeah. You know what he's talking about because he hasn't been in Norwich for a long time. And also, uh, the our executive producer's brother and sister live in Norwich. Right, OK. Very few people go to the. So there's two East... people out of four in this present company. Very, very. I've got a connection with Norwich. Very, very few people in this country go to the west coast, uh, north of Blackpool, because there are no motorways that go there. Rubbish. The M6. Very very, very few. Well, no, that goes, go that goes north. Doesn't go east. It uh, doesn't go west. No, but and you very, can get very to, few you can people. Get to Lancaster. You can get to Warrington. Very, very few people go to Mid Wales because there's no motorways to Mid Wales. No, I mean, there's nothing in Mid Wales. And by the way, there should be another parallel motorway going down at the West Country because that's our most popular um, uh, holiday They're build area. One, aren't they? <coughs> Sorry, they're going to build one. I didn't they? know that. Are they? Oh, they are. Yeah, Cameron's announced it. Is that what you, you, is that what you think? No, no. Well, I've never seen the plans for it. There should also well, be. Perhaps a, they didn't run them past you. Should also be a. a white paper. They should also widen the A3 and make it the A3M all the way down to Portsmouth right. from uh, from London. Right. Because that would be is more that convenient. What, is that like somebody did to your shirt? No, no, no. Widened no, no, no. it. No, no, no. Well, it no, looks no. like somebody widened it, it. it. It's a major artery down to our major port, Portsmouth, and it should be a wide three uh, carriageway road. It will also make it easier for me to get up and down from my two homes. <laughs> yeah, it's all about you. And therefore, you, that's why I would like it to happen. It's all about you. Absolutely it's unbelievable. It's not all about me. I'm talk- I pay my taxes. Why shouldn't I demand roads to drive my car on? Yeah, because What's we all pay that? our taxes and we all have to drive on yeah. the same roads. Yeah, I was going to tell you about frozen food. Right, but- we'll get there in a minute. Yeah. Hold that thought because the Torreners. Oh, the I'm band. sorry. I thought you said he wa- the guy was a foreigner. Not Johnny Foreigner. No, is that the name of the ga- of the band? The name of the gang. <laughs> the name of the gang yeah, is Foreigner. Yeah, name of the band Foreigner. Now listen. The reason we're talking about ice <laughs> I hope this is this. It becomes a music show. For, for years and years, you have been mocking me um, because of my propensity to wear eat... ridiculous shirts. No, no, to eat frozen fish fingers. Or, not particularly, or, no. or, or anything no, else not that's particularly. It's frozen. I, listen, I don't have a problem with anything frozen. Anything else that's frozen comes out of no, a fridge. I don't right? have a problem with, with you eating right. fish fingers. I just say now, that everything you eat is frozen. How do you, you don't think, cook anything. How do you think we get food transported around the world? Like tomatoes from South Africa, yeah. like oranges from, say, Israel, mm. like... Um, uh, bananas. Uh, uh, but, well, I'm not sure about bananas. Don't they freeze bananas? No, they don't freeze bananas. No, uh, they don't like, freeze tomatoes like, either. Yes, they do. No, they oh, yes, they do. You can't. Like uh, lamb from New Zealand. Yeah. OK? Like beef from Argentina. How mm. do you think it all gets here? It gets here in frozen ships, OK? Refrigerated, uh, refrigerated ships, that's right. Ships. Now, let me Not tell you this. Not necessarily frozen. Let me tell you this. How, read... do you think, how do you think we get, for what? example, um, all of the shellfish that we get from, it's flown down from Scotland, the salmon? They don't freeze it. No. They don't freeze it. Well, they freeze lots of food to minus 23 degrees centigrade in less than a minute. And do you know why they do it? They do it to contain the vitamin C in it. Because, really? you see, what I've discovered, what I've discovered um, in the research papers... there's vitamin papers, C in fish fingers, do you? Hang on, hang on. There's vitamin D in fish fingers, mm, and... which is uh, good for your bones. Now, listen to this, because I've, uh, I've um, been studying this, honestly. Have you? Now, there's a chap called uh, Brian Young, chief executive of the British Frozen Food Federation. Oh, there right. is well, one. he'll be all for it, then, won't he? They're called the BFFF, right? Yeah. And what happens is... Freezing doesn't damage food, it preserves vitamins and minerals. Well, he would say that, Hang, hang on, hang on, this is scientific fact. No, it's not. But it is. He's a lobbyist. Within three days of vegetables being pulled from the ground, 80% of the vitamin C is naturally lost from them, and most fresh food has a useful nutritional lifespan of up to five days. Freezing food... Why are you shouting? <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> it's got my voice, that. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Right. Calm down. Freezing food stops this nutritional... Um, uh, depletion mm. and improvement in fast freezing technology has made it more appetizing than ever, as the speed at which food is frozen has a direct impact on its taste. Okay, yeah. as food freezes, moisture inside and outside it forms ice crystals. The slower something freezes, the bigger the ice crystals become, and the more damage they do to the structure of the food and therefore its flavour. 
So products including fish... Are you fish, just going to read this out? Hang on, hang on, including fish, that's fish well, no, fingers... Well, no, I'm not going to hang on, because, and, and again, meat, no, because I don't want to hear it. can now be fast frozen using liquid nitrogen to chill them Why to minus... Shouting? Hang on, I'm getting a point over. To minus 23 degrees centigrade in less than a minute. How about that? I've got no idea, because I stopped listening at the second sentence. No, 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 no. That's all you did was shouting at me. You stopped listening because you know that I've defeated your well, argument. I don't, one, I don't know what you food think, you're talking about. You think frozen well, first food. Of, first of all, I don't know what food you're talking about. Fish fingers. Fish fingers, is that what he's talking about? And frozen meat pies. And frozen meat pies. Yeah, well, which are very wanna, nutritious. If you think that eating frozen meat pies and fish yeah. fingers yeah. and, uh, you know, an assorted uh, uh, fruit-flavoured chewing gum is yeah. good for your health, yeah. then I'm very sorry for you. Prawns. Frozen prawns, utterly fantastic. Non-frozen prawns go off so quickly. Quickly, have you, you ever might had fresh throw them out. Have you ever had fresh prawns? Uh, yes. In, were they better or worse? Uh, well, they're too big. I don't like big prawns. They're in America, and I hate those big prawns. I like little prawns mm-hmm. on a plate with. You uh, prefer them coming out of a plastic packet that's been frozen for God knows how long. Yes, I do me? actually. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, yeah, I do. then you have no taste buds. No, well, I don't You're care. You're a Philistine. I don't care. You shouldn't be put in front of decent food. Meat freezes beautifully and contains nutrients including protein, minerals and vitamins A and D unaffected by the process of freezing. And How about that? And what's this guy's job again? Well, meat such as poultry... Did you hear what I said? Yes, lacks can fast and can have a high water content. Can you not just read, fares please? less well. I've told you exactly what it's all about. What's his name? His name is... Um, his name is Brian. Brian. And he is the chief... Ex- <laughs> what's the problem? Brian. Yeah, Hello, Brian. Brian. And yeah. what's Brian's job? He's the chief executive of the British Frozen Food Federation. Right. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? The BFFF. That's like talking to somebody who's in charge of nuclear weapons, saying nuclear weapons are perfectly safe. They're absolutely fine. Well, I think, I think nuclear weapons are safe. Yeah, well, I'm sure you do. How yeah. are they safe, exactly? Because one's never blown up. Mm. We've never fired one at anybody, therefore... What about Hiroshima? Uh... No, 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 no. You said nuclear weapons, not nuclear bombs. Well, what's nuclear... A nu- is a nuclear bomb not a nuclear weapon? Uh, n- well, it wasn't in those days. What was it then? Uh, it was uh, a destructive um, device right. uh, designed to end the Second World War. Mm. Now, what I'm so saying how is... how would you define a weapon, then? A, a weapon is something that you can use two ways. Mm. You can either use it to attack people right. or you can use it as a, a deterrent uh-huh. to stop them attacking you. Attacking right. you. Right. And that is the success of the nuclear weapons philosophy in the Western world yeah. since the Second World War. So we did use a weapon, then? No, we didn't use a weapon. Oh. No, we didn't. All right. We didn't use so a weapon. In Russia, we didn't use a weapon. Look, uh, I don't know what you're trying to do here, trying to say. I'm trying to tell you... All I'm trying to tell you... I'm is trying to tell you, you that you... the presence of nuclear submarines in the British and American US, uh, you know, like, naval fleets yeah. is the reason that we haven't had a war in Europe since 1945, is OK? Yes, yes. What about the war in Bosnia? That was an internecine civil war. I'm talking about war, there was a war between. In Europe, though. I'm talking about war between two countries. Ah. Okay, you're getting very, very picky here, and all well, you're I talking am. about is frozen no, food. I'd so I don't know why you... you're talking rubbish well, about other well, things. Because I'd rather talk to you about other because things. Because you can't hold the argument on this. Well, I can. Because you... you've been mocking no. me for years for eating fish fingers. No, no I haven't. There's well, nothing no. wrong with fish fingers. There, there isn't fish fingers wrong with is fish the most fingers. nutritious food you can possibly what I'm eat. What I'm attempting to do is to stop you from shouting about what this guy's been saying to you, because what this guy is clearly is biased. I mean, this is a guy who's in charge of the frozen food business. So, of course, he's going to say frozen food is brilliant. Well, I, I, I will occasionally eat something which has been frozen. Yeah. Frozen peas, for example, are the finest things you can peas get. Are lovely. Because there's no point in buying peas in any other yeah. form. If you can buy them fresh and take them out of a pod and you've got time to do that, that's fine. Absolutely. But one of the things that I find ridiculous, for example, is that you can now yeah. buy frozen chopped onions. Yeah. And it's like for the laziest cook of the, uh, of the Western world. Well, that, where hang you, on. Where I, you thought just, you told me, just... I thought you told me that your life partner and mother of your children bought those. She does, yeah. But I find it well, absolutely ridiculous. I, won't, I, refuse, I refuse to eat them. I refuse to eat them because if, the... you want to, if you want to cut up an onion, you cut up an onion. There's no point in buying them frozen and putting them, what, them out of What have you got in your bank. freezer at home? In my freezer? Yeah. But what I tend to put in my freezer mm. uh, is I always have some peas there. But generally speaking, what I do is I cook, um, you know, fresh food, and then if I have a little bit left over, mm. I freeze it and put it in. I, uh, I do exactly the same. Yeah, but no, your your freezer presumably is full of uh, what you described last time, which was plates of baked beans on toast. Sometimes uh, plates of things that you've left on a plate. Sometimes because uh, I freeze them and bring them back to life. Yeah, but you don't put you, you put leave them on a plate though, don't you? Sometimes. Yeah. It depends. I don't know. Listen, I, be, I eat fish fingers occasionally. Yeah. I don't yeah. have a problem with fish fingers. Yeah. Fish finger sandwiches very nice, but I'm just worried that you don't eat anything else. My mum used to tell me that oh you had to let the food cool down till it was just not hot and then you could freeze it. Uh-huh. Not true. You should freeze it at its hottest. Mm. 
literally. I mean, even put it on the on the oven, uh, on the uh, cooker, and uh, uh, heat it up again, then freeze it. No, because that retains. Not true. No, that retains all the constituents no. of what it's all about that's in the first not, place. That's not the best thing to do. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, that. I know these things. I've been freezing stuff yeah. for a long, long time. But I'm afraid it's mm. true to say that you are, are not a connoisseur of food. Uh, you can eat whatever you want, but mm. all I'm telling you is, is, if you ate more fresh food, you would be a much healthier person. No, no, no. I've just told you the facts. That fresh food sometimes has lost all its vitamin C, all its nutritional content, all its goodness because it's been left for five days before it's reached you in the shops. Mm. If you pick up like um, what are those cabbages called that are uh, not called cabbages? They're called greens, right? So you pick greens. up the greens, yeah, and you think are they cabbages or not then? Well, they're they're, they're root plants called greens, mm. and and you get them and you take them and chop them and and all that. I mean. The point is, they may have lost all their nutritional value by the time they get to you well, if they haven't been frozen. Buy, depends where you buy them from. They haven't, if you haven't been frozen, well, mm. you, you buy them from Tesco's or something. Well, I don't buy vegetables a world, from there. A worldwide, well, where do you get your vegetables from? Borough Market, much fresher. Well, how do you know that? Because they come from local farms and they are, it's rubbish. And they are not it's rubbish. mass produced. No, you see, rubbish, that's, another mass propa- that's another propaganda idea. It's rubbish. What's a nonsense? You can tell by tasting them, they taste a lot better. Haven't you seen all these adverts where, where all Instead these people say, time. oh, you know, locally produced for Tesco's or Morrison's or well, that's Sainsbury's why that's or whatever? Nonsense. That's, why, that's why it's mm. nonsense. No, well, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to sure. have, next time we go to Borough Market, rather than going to the pub, yeah. I'll take you actually into the market yeah. and I'll have you bite into a carrot that they sell there. Right? Well, I don't want to do that. Because you'll see how much more tasty it is and how much better for you I don't, I don't like anyway. I think raw carrots are pretty horrible, you know, right. tasteless. Well, raw I've got a couple of I used to eat raw you. potatoes when I was a I've kid. I've got a couple They're of messages for you here. Well. John yeah. in Prestatin oh, yes. uh, says this. Uh, Tell Mike Porky Perry's theory of leather coats being worn by panzer crews to keep mm. warm is rubbish. Thousands of German troops died of the cold on the Russian front. Uh, it was the greatest downfall. Uh, and here's one, uh, let's mm. see, from uh, uh, somebody else who says, Sean mm. in Brighton, the German panzer divisions froze to death in Russia, causing them to lose the war. Uh, mm. And he says, love the show. Mm. And uh, uh, where are we? There's a couple from uh, some lorry drivers here. Good morning, Mr. Graham. I've been a lorry driver for 20 years uh, and uh, drives, drivers like that should get banned. Always look either on the back of the cab where the lights are for a number plate or trailers normally have a number on the back. Yeah, but they didn't have, he didn't have a, tra- no. a number. That was the problem. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Well, our, uh, our uh, correspondent uh, told us that uh, presumably the, the truck Sorry, the the engine part of a yeah, lorry, yeah. which is called what the cab, the cab, I the suppose, cab. Yeah. I suppose it pulls different trailers all the time, yes. and I suppose it's the responsibility of the driver to attach the number of the cab well, to surely, the back of the trailer. Surely. But if you don't, it's against the law. Well, isn't it? I would have thought there should yeah. be some kind of yeah. inspection process. Exactly. I mean, if you're taking a TNT lorry out of the TNT mm. depot mm. and you're driving it past somebody who's got a, a, a you know some kind of a clipboard, I agree with you. Surely they should be going or, or, or a tracking device. And I say, agree. Well, hang on, you stop because you haven't got a number plate. You on thought the back. so, wouldn't you? You thought so. Yeah. For time, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out, four podcasts this week and every other week as well, of course, and uh, lots, lots more uh, news coming up on some future shows. We've got the Head and Chickens coming up in a couple of week's time. That's sold out, I'm afraid. Birmingham, uh, we might be able to get a few more tickets made available towards March the 6th, a bit closer to the mm. time, but mm. that's pretty much sold out as well. But we will be doing some more shows, and uh, we will be pinpointing areas to come to. We might even go to Portsmouth next, won't we? Uh, well, we're looking at a south coast location yeah. for two reasons. Firstly, I live down there, and secondly... <laughs> that's well, the best well, reason, isn't it? Well, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, a bit of local knowledge right. doesn't hurt. And um, secondly... Any kind of knowledge would be good, really. Sorry? Any kind of knowledge would be good for you. Like any kind of knowledge would be good for I've you. I've just been told, by the way, that the French uh, uh, word for, for fire brigade is le pompier. Ah, but you see, it's not. See, it's not. See, le pompier is the combined service that um, means a fire brigade is a multi-response vehicle and does take people to hospital. Well, I've, I've, because I've just doubt it. Because one of our guys in this very building, Russell, has just told us, right? So, you know, you stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, le brigade de feu is the, um, <laughs> is the old-fashioned name for the... What about uh, the chemin de feu? The Shimandafer, that's yeah. a chimney on fire. No, that's the railway. Is that a railway? Oh, yeah. Okay, I thought it was, I thought it was Shiman was chimney. Oh, yeah. well, never mind. Um, but uh, no, it's literally the road made of iron. Uh, no, it's it, no, it's not. It's it's the road fired by fire, so to speak. No. That's where the fur comes from. No. It is honestly. No, it's iron. Believe me, believe me, I know these things. Now, listen, I want to tell you about something yeah. that really doesn't have much interest to you because it, it, you're a million miles away from it. Go on. Too much exercise. 
uh, is as bad as being a couch potato. Yeah, it is. I agree with you. It is. I've I've, I've always been I, one of the things that I've always been astonished about, and I yeah. came across it first in New York when I lived there in the eighties, was when people started joining gyms. Right. That's right. And yeah. New York City, as you know, is full of high rise uh, uh, office uh, buildings and high rise sure. apartment buildings. Sure. And you saw all these people in a gym mm. on what they used to call the stairmaster. That's you know, right. Walking up and down stairs on a machine. That's right. And I thought to myself, you know, if you live on the twentieth floor of an apartment building, mm. just go up and down the stairs exactly. when you go home I every totally day. Agree. You don't have to join a gym. But even that would be too much for you. I mean. The point is, the way I do it, which is gentle exercise, walking, OK, yeah. is the very, very best form of exercise. People who go at it like they're professionals, yeah. and you see them all the time, don't you? This incredibly intense look on their face, their yeah. headphones on, carrying a couple of weights on their wrist, you know, to make out that, you know, they're, they're trying hard and everybody else. Mm. They really do run the risk of damaging themselves. Yeah. And do you remember, Mike, when we worked in America, there was a guy called, wasn't he Jim Fix? Jim Fix, yeah. Right, and he, he was like the world's he was the kind most of famous uh, cross-country runner. He was the father of modern jobs. Jogging, really. Father of jogging, I think he was a cross country, you know. But I mean, yeah. this guy would run 60 miles a day and right. all that. What happened to him? He suddenly dropped out of a heart attack, didn't yeah, he? He did, that's right. Yeah, and I mean, you've got to be very careful about this. But I'm absolutely serious. Um, these people who are obsessive, um, you know, keep fit experts and all that kind of, or keep right. fit fanatics who think they're experts have got to watch themselves because yeah. it, it is not necessarily the case. No, it is well, not you know what's interesting case. is I've got, I don't know whether I've shown you this, but I've got this yep. dashboard on my phone, right, which shows me all of the exercise that I do through the course of any given day. Well, I bet that's why, not used much, why, why are you looking at me like that? Well, it's ridiculous. I'm doing exercise. Well, uh, uh, my average uh, walking and running distance uh, in a month uh, on a daily basis is 2.23 kilometres, it says here. Uh, what's that in miles? That's about one mile. Yeah, something like that. Well, and one then, mile uh, a day? Is that all you walk? And then, Well, it depends on the it's day. It's no wonder you've got health problems. Honestly. I haven't got health problems. You have, you you know, there's have. only one person in here that's got health problems. That's you. You're about to keel over and die because yeah, you've got a dodgy heart. Yeah, but they're official health problems. Only oh, one third of my heart problems. works, and I don't think that's necessarily for you to make a joke out of it, you know? Well, you just uh, said that I'm the unhealthy one here, know, and I don't think I am. I don't like to talk about my health uh, problems. I know you don't problems. like it. But um, also, then I've got, uh, I've got the number of steps that I do. Da my daily average is something like... 3,522 steps, mm -hmm. right? OK. Flights climb, daily Where average. Where do you ever walk? Seriously, where do you ever walk? You get in your car to drive home, you get mm. out at the other end, you go in I your house. Plenty. You don't walk plenty. Yeah, I do. Where have you walked today? Well, today I would have walked, uh, let's see. I would well, have no, you walked, walked around, Birmingham today. Walked around so, Birmingham quite so, a bit. So it wasn't a, a typical flights, day. My daily average of, uh, of flights climbed is 11, right? Because I live up, on, I live up three flights of stairs. Hang on, Mike. On an average day... Yeah. You get in your car outside Talksport Towers, yeah. you drive into an underground car park, which is where you live in London, right? Uh -huh. And then you go up to your flat. Yeah. And then you never which leave that flat until, until you come back to no, work. Not on every day, no. Sometimes I go out. You get the elevator sometimes. No, there isn't a, there isn't a lift. No there? elevator, I right. Walk, I walk three All right. flights well, let me tell every you this. Day. Let me tell you this. Three flights up, three that, flights down. That is a pathetic amount of daily exercise. The data here Utterly says... Utterly pathetic. You're not listening to me. The data here I'm says... I'm to you. My daily average of flights climbed is 11. That's 11 flights of stairs, right? Yeah, there's only six stairs in the flight in your block. No, that's not true. It is true. No, it's not true. This trying to know what I'm talking about. It's three flights of stairs. Yesterday, up to my flat. I walked up and down Box Hill twice. Did you? Yeah. How far is that? Well, it's a long way. It's a long way up. And you're it's, not any uh, healthier, though, are you? Of course, I'm healthier. I have to keep my my myself in shape. Mm. Look, the point is the reason why we all exercise, right, is to have a long life. Yes. Now, what happens if you have a long life and somebody tells you? At a point in your life when you still feel fit and healthy, you've got to retire. What would that do to you? Um, well, I suppose the difference for you and I is that we don't mm. have jobs which you can retire from necessarily. Well, I don't want to retire. Uh, well, I know you don't want to retire because for you, once you retire, your yeah. life will be completely meaningless. No, no, no that's not true. Because you've got nothing else to do. No, that's rubbish. That's, well, what that's would you do if you didn't work? I'd pursue something else. Like, like what? Well, I might go back to university as a mature student and study the history of the Royal Navy. What do you mean, back to in university? Portsmouth. You never been to university? Of course I have. I went no. to the University of the Trent. No, you, um, went to, you went to Nottingham Poly. I kind of tried um, retirement three years ago. You? you know, I thought, well, yeah, it's winding down now. I think I will, you know. I'm OK, you know, financially, so yeah. to speak. Very lucky uh, that it's like that. No, but it would be boring. And, and, and then... For somebody with an active and mind And then, I, like te you. I tell you, I tell you, it is, honestly, it will kill you well, what quicker about, than anything. But, but what you could do, for example, yeah. is you could write. And so, you know, when you write or when you're involved in mm. what we do in radio, TV, mm. whatever, mm. you don't really have to retire as such, do you? I find writing incredibly boring. It's, it's, it's People is... reading your stuff find it incredibly boring as well. <laughs> so why, why did my, why my books become bestsellers then? Uh, well, you say they're bestsellers. Yeah, they're I've, best never, sellers. I've never seen them on any bestseller list. The only list I've ever seen them on is the, the cheap list where you can get them for no, one no, pence. No, 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 no. There's an awful lot of bubbly in Brazil uh, bestsellers. Yeah. 
Uh, sold, well, you over, say that. sold you over 100,000. Well, you say that. Yeah. Well, I, I've never seen any evidence of it. Well, you weren't aware of it when I wrote it right. because, you know... You, you would, never sent me a copy, I think for you were, like, pretending to you be the editor of the South Wales Daily Mirror or if something I, if at I the bought, If I wrote a book, yeah. I would send you a free copy. Well, I, I, why should I send you free anything? Well, because that's why what should you I? do. Why should that's I? What, that's what you do. You know, If I you mean, had any brains, you should have actually sent it to me when I was in school. What time? What, when did the book come out? What year? Uh, I don't know, 2000 and something. You don't know? Yeah, um, well, you know, sort of 2010 or something. 2010? Or nine, 2009 maybe. Well, you should, well, well if, you'd say, if, you said, if it came out before 2008 and I was in Scotland and you wrote a book about Alan Brazil, you should have sent me a copy anyway, of look, to the, review. Anyway, look, the world is changing yeah. and I don't think anybody now who's got any sense of self-worth, dignity, mm. standing... Should even think of retiring before the age of seventy. Well, you Why say, do no, you want to retire before the age of seventy? Yeah, well, I mean, funnily enough, that's one of the big bugbears at the moment, isn't it? Because the government is saying that actually, mm. because of the pension problem and the pension shortfall in this country, yeah. that people are going to have to work till they're seventy, and people don't want to work till they're yeah, seventy. Yeah, but the, the thing is, my uh, the seventy is the new uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 60. It's the new is the new fifty five. Is it seventy? Is the new fifty five? Mm. You see, people these days, you try and guess their age. It's almost impossible. Yeah. They've changed so much. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is mm. because. I head on to a sporting situation, yes. which, of course, here at Talk Sport we're uh, very hot on, and it's about umpires in cricket being yeah. told at 65 they've got to retire. Yeah. Now, I find that ridiculous because anybody who's been a cricket umpire all his life has been very active and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Immense well, experience. Well, they stand still, don't they? Ah, um, uh, yeah, but they do a lot of walking around, don't they? I immense experience, right? And mm. the, uh, often they are former cricketers anyway, mm. former cricketers who've, who've turned into uh, umpiring, yeah. and they're being told they've got to retire. Now, I, I think that's... You know, Peter Willie and George Sharp, with 45 years of first-class umpiring experience between them, yeah. uh, took the England and Wales Cricket Board to an employment tribunal yesterday in an attempt to remain in the game beyond right. the age of 65. And I presume there wasn't a decision yesterday, so they're still going on today. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Two long-standing officials have... The two long-standing officials have pleaded against that dismissal from the professional game. Well, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm totally with them there. I mean, it's well, surely, surely... right in what you say. They stand around umpires. Yeah. They don't run around like referees. Yeah. But surely the point about anybody retiring in that kind of job should yeah. be done on a on a on a, on a pay, case by case basis. Because, for example, one yeah, of I them, agree. One of them may be fitter than the other. One of them may have better eyesight than the other. And you do need to have pretty good eyesight. And you do need to oh, be pretty do. fit. You and do. So you shouldn't maybe tell everyone that they have to retire at sixty five. But you can't have them working up until they're eighty, can you? I mean, you can't. Why have, not? Well, well, not, well, not have, eighty, but certainly seventy five. I would well, think. I don't think so. I would think you could. What about, I mean, football referees, for example. Yeah. I mean, they have to run. Oh well, they have to run. I mean, so sh- you can. I mean, there must be. Retirement age for football referees. I think it's forty-eight, isn't it? Is it? I think it is forty-eight. Yeah. I'm not. I'll double check that. But you're not against that? Not really, because they've got to try and keep up with the pace of yeah. uh, football. I mean, you wouldn't want somebody who's seventy running about a football. No, pitch of course you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. But I'm talking about I'm talking about um, umpires in cricket. Now you're right. One of the issues is whether or not their eyesight is up to standard, yeah. right? Well, that's simply you, you simply give them an eye test and yeah. find out. And by the way. If that, you see, I've never quite understood this. Mm. I've never understood this. When I was a kid and wanted to be a pilot, right? Yes. You know, I wanted to be an RAF pilot right. who flew an English electric aeroplane. An English electric aeroplane? Yeah, because I I made one as a model, and as soon as I made an Airfix one... Did you? And I thought, as soon as Did I made it... Did it fly? One, no, of course it didn't fly. The Airfix models don't fly. They stand on a little uh, stand, don't you they? You said it was electric. No, no, it was called the English Electric. The very first jets we had after the Second World War, which were like jets. Well, they were called electric. They were called the English Electric. Were they electric? Did you know that? No, I've never heard of them. Well, they were. They are. They were are. they electric? No. Well, why were they called electric? Well, I don't know because I didn't manufacture well, them. Well, you're the expert. No. Well, I am an expert. I agree. But you that's don't like know why it's called electric. Well, hang on. That's like you asking me asking you why was the Porsche called the Porsche? Oh, no. Well, it was the name of the company, wasn't it? Well, I don't know, and you don't know, yeah, you but see. I haven't declared... I didn't make an Airfix model of a Porsche and say I was an expert and I wanted to be a Porsche didn't driver. You, did you never make models of cars when no. you were a kid? No. Never stuck them together? Not really. I never had the patience for it. Well, Somebody it, bought me an Airfix yeah. model once, I ended up smashing it up. Well, that's, that's your destructive side, I hated side, the isn't idea it? that you had to, like, break all the little bits off and mm. put them all together and, you know... That's it terrible. wasn't for me, no. Anyway, let's get back to the umpires, you yes. see, because that's what we're talking about. I, I think it's a damn disgrace. Now, on on the I thing... Yeah. So I've never understood this. So mm. when I wanted to be a pilot, right... Apparently again, it was called the English Electric Lightning, so it was a lightning. It wasn't yeah. an electric. Yeah, well, the electric was in the title, was it not? Yeah, but it was right, electric thank lightning. You. Thank you. Now, going back to my ambitions to have been a Spitfire pilot, right? Yeah. Perhaps in those days, the sort of glasses that you uh, you got from opticians weren't up to mm. it. 
But these days, there should be no reason whatsoever why anybody should be barred from doing a job on the basis that their eyesight's not up to it. Because Well, that's not true. No optical science is so good that anybody's eyesight can be brought up to 100%, 20-20 vision, call it what you want, with the addition of a, of, of a false lens, be it a glass, be it, be it a contact lens, be it laser surgery. Your eyes can be brought mm. up to, to perfect standard, can't they, at any well, time? That's they easy can, can't well, they? Well, they can. Well, yes and they no. They can, they yes can. And, yes and no, because that's easier said than done. For example, mm. if somebody was short-sighted or somebody was long-sighted, yeah. you, know, you might say, well, they're, you know, one of them is less likely to be a good cricket umpire because mm. they're correcting, the correcting of their eyesight uh, might make it easier for them to see things close up but not mm. so far away. So you want people to have as good eyesight as possible. Yeah, of course you do. Of course and, you, you do. Know, and, and, I mean, I agree with you. I, I think what they should say Jeffrey is... Jeffrey Boycott is, played test cricket mm. wearing what you could only describe as National Health Service-like glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he yeah. was a player, though. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, don't you think a player needs a, a, at least the same sort of ability to spot a ball, reactions... He does. ..and all that kind of but stuff not, as, a, not, as an umpire? Yeah, he does, but it's not so important for making a decision as to whether the ball was, you know, over the boundary or whether, whether there was a wicket or whether there was an LBW. It's you pretty know. important when you're swinging at it because if you miss yes, it, it, you're going to be out. Yes, it is, but that's a, yeah. different, but that's a different thing. All I'm, I'm, mm. I'm agreeing with you, uh, so yes. you don't need to become belligerent about it. All I'm saying is yeah. that um, they should do it on a case-by-case basis, and I think that if you mm-hmm. were turning up, for example, mm. uh, in... I don't know, uh, an airline situation, and you saw that the yeah. pilot was 80. I think you might be oh, less, no, no, I'm not less that. inclined I'm not to that. get on a plane with him than uh, somebody who might be, say, 45. But the whole world is shifting. Mm. Do you know how many people we've got now that the Queen has to send a card to because they get over to a hun- over 100? No. Loads. Oh, loads. loads. So I think it's going to be a number. Well, I don't know exact number, but, I mean, there are a lot more now. Well, I mean, well where's your evidence for that? Well, uh, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's absolutely so true. So that's what you're telling me? No, I'm telling you. Well, you know it's true. We all know it's well, true. Know people it's true. are living longer. People are living a lot longer. I mean, look. Have you seen the time, by the way? Look at it. Well, look of course I haven't it's seen even, the time because the clock now. is in your... I mean, let's get this straight to the listeners. You keep going on. Have you seen the time? Have you seen the time? Well, You've got a clock directly in your so sight you. line. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't because I don't spend my late. time staring at the clock because all I do is try to contribute to this programme the best way I can. Time runs away with me. There aren't enough minutes or hours for me to be able to contribute. Yeah, I know Look at right. the light! Look into the light. This is mm. Talk Sport. We are the two mics, of course, and uh, we've got lots and lots more to talk about. Parry philosophy coming up very shortly. Some amazing pictures coming in, by there the way, on are. Twitter. Uh, people have done you up as the TNT driver. Uh, I know. There's another one That's of a fire engine. That's called Dean. Thanks, uh, Dean. That's fire, very amusing. Uh, fire engine with, uh, with uh, mm. lots of people being taken to hospital on it uh, from Woodenhead. Mm. Uh, quite remarkable stuff. And still more comments about your shirt, it has to be said, uh, which is apparently Call mostly a parachute. Been parachute, tent, yeah, deck chair. Tent. It really is People dreadful. saying you and I could both have gone into the shirt. Uh, yeah, very possibly so. Yeah. Uh, now, John in Horsham says, mm. uh, Mike, Mike, I have a double astigmatism in my left eye and also I'm long-sighted mm. uh, and it cannot be rectified. So once again, Mr Parry is talking nonsense. Mm. He's more annoying than Perez Hilton. Maybe we yeah. call him Paris. Yeah, Paris Hilton. Yeah, I thought it was Paris Hilton they were talking about as well. Now, Dean has sent in a mock-up picture of a Buddha with my face on the top, yes, you know? right. And I don't know whether... I hope this is not, you know, offending people who follow Buddha and all that kind of stuff, but it's only... Uh, it's, I shouldn't it's think so. a light-hearted moment, all that. But Dean sent us another note saying that some very serious Buddha site has actually... Buddha site? Yeah. Has What's t- a Buddha site? Well, you know, a... A, well, a um, website. A website that, uh, you a know... A Buddhist website, Bubba, you yeah. Has actu- Bubba. Buddha. 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 Bubba. Has actually taken the image, mm. and added it to its collection. Really? As though, you know, I'm, I don't know, being admitted to some sort of, you know... Well, there are those who say you should be admitted to some sort of something or other, but <laughs> no, I mean, that's no, another story no, altogether. No, no, some um, sort of, I was going to say, um, uh, favoured company or something uh-huh. like that, you well, know what I mean? Well, I mean, you know, mm. we're, we're very early d- uh, days in the uh, in the world of parilosophy, so maybe yeah. uh, it might become something which is a sort of cult favourite, mm. we shall have to see. We'll be hearing from uh, uh, from the Zen master yep, very, very shortly. right. Why were now, we playing um, a salesman song? Uh, the salesman from the monkeys, because I want to talk to you about car was salesmen. the monkeys, was it? It was the monkeys, Good yeah. God. I want to talk Didn't to you. Didn't realise that. I want to talk Happy Valley Sunday. Um, no, it was called The Salesman. I know it was, but don't you remember in uh, in New York, old mm. Mickey Brennan went and bought a house in Happy Valley Sunday? Did he? That's what we called it, wasn't it? I don't remember Because that. that was a monkey song, wasn't no. it, Happy Valley Sunday? It was, yeah. No, well, I don't well, remember Well, he that. did have a house, didn't he? he, he... Well, he bought a house in a Delaware water gap. Yeah, but it, wasn't it called Happy Valley? I don't know. I think it was. Anyway, this was on. a house that ended up being built on um, uh, a sort of methane dump. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. uh, when he tried to sell it, he couldn't. No, so, and in fact... It, I'm mean, very unlucky, actually. Without giving away any secrets, he's now fled to the Dominican Republic, 
Rica. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yeah. That's right. It's not that where, back in um, America. Where apparently he lives quite close to a volcano. <laughs> yeah, been a bit unlucky he's, with he's, his. He's, uh, he's had a bit of bad luck with his, his time. Ge- his geophysical... Fantastic photographer, though. Yeah, been, been unlucky with his geophysical um, location. Yes, he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, because we're yeah. going to talk about car sales and car sales. He was the one, of course, you told the story about a few weeks ago mm. when he went all the way to Cuba to take pictures yeah. of uh, Arthur Scargill. Arthur Scargill, right. but he'd never seen Arthur Scargill. He'd lived in America for so long, well, he'd so seen he took him, pictures of the wrong bloke. Yeah, he just didn't know who he looked like, but yeah. Right. Um, You're going to tell me something about a survey on car salesmen. No, no. It's, I mean, look, there's too many surveys going. And do you know what? Newspapers are full of the, these days, surveys. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why? Well, they've got no reporters left. Got, a, they've got no reporters left. They can't left. do any stories because they're too scared of getting done by, done over by lawyers. Yeah, that's that, that, that's a second reason. Yeah. Third reason, we've all seen the news in action, in yeah. moving pictures yeah. on 24-hour news or, or stations. Or it's been out on Twitter or something. Or it's been out on Twitter or we've seen the pictures or... You know, people like Wayne Rooney now, when they uh, get a new haircut, mm. instead of flogging the picture to a paper for ten thousand right. pounds, just put it out on Twitter. Well, I mean, even so, that picture of Kim Sears in the in the parental advisory jumper yes. was all over Twitter exactly. because of the time difference with Australia before it then appeared on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. Exactly, the next day. and I've mad, seen it, it by then. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Absolutely so, mad. So what happens now is mm. I think a lot of companies now employ more PRs than they ever have done yeah. and tell them. It's easy to get us in the paper these days. What I do is put some bum survey together yeah. and you come out with all sorts of uh, ridiculous um, mm. conclusions yeah. and it suddenly becomes news yeah. and, and the papers are full of them. But anyway, that's by the by. Point is, mm. I was reading, this yeah. is not a survey, I was reading yeah. um, a lady friend of mine's copy of a magazine called Good Housekeeping. No, right. right? You were reading Good Housekeeping? Yeah, I was, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was just, I, was I think I used there. to know the woman that edited that. I can't remember now who it is. Really? Yeah, yeah OK. Well, years ago. It's been around for a long time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's IPC, isn't it? I think it is, and mm. it's, it's it's a very credible magazine. It is. But I'm just sitting there flicking through it and I come across a piece which says that the most anti-woman, misogynistic businesses in this country... Misogynistic. Misogynistic, yes. yeah, that's what I said. Misogynistic, misogynistic yeah, yeah. Are car showrooms. That doesn't surprise me. R- which are almost entirely built, devised and thought of as being a man's domain yeah. and women aren't welcome there. Mm. And in which fact, is curious, actually, in, because women buy mm, an awful lot of cars. Yeah, and in fact, it said... That in their survey, you know, this the lady who wrote this had rung around all mm. over the place no. and could not find one company that employed a female car salesroom right? uh, saleswoman. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And when you think about it? it, you know, think of all the car salesrooms you've yeah. been in during your life. Yeah. And, and it's absolutely right. Yeah, I can't think and, of And I think one. it's very misogynistic mm. indeed. I really and, do. And also, when you walk into those places, yeah. there is that kind of macho feel to the place, isn't absolutely. there? And the, only, the only women in there yeah. are, are behind sort of secretarial desks doing secretarial well, jobs. You know, you kind of get the feeling the only good looking women who get into those car showrooms yeah. are those who would be asked to drape themselves across the bonnet of a, a new sports well, car. Well, it's not or something quite like that, that bad, is it? No, it is that bad. Because... But they still do bits of that, like at the motor yeah. show and stuff like that. Do you know what? I I remember going to the motor show for the first time when I was about 17, 16 yeah. or 17. Came down to London with my mate, um, uh, Kev. Yeah. We went to Earl's Court yeah. and saw this gleaming, and I mean gleaming, white E-type Jaguar. Mm. Beautiful po- car. Polished up to, to you know, fantastic Red levels. Red seats? I can't or remember. I think it was black seats. I think it was black I seats, yeah. Black, yeah. Yeah, but... There was a beautiful girl in a bikini draped across yeah. the bonnet of it. Shocking. And I'm not sure whether I fell in love more with the car or mm. the girl. Yeah. I don't know. I, I you if, didn't buy if, the car. If yeah. I'd have been offered the choice of Look at the, the car or girl, I don't know what I'd have done. No. It would have been the world's biggest dilemma. You probably would have been asked to leave. World's biggest dilemma. Well, once maybe. again, we've run out of time. Look and at the big time. black Look wheels, you know, yeah. big black tyres on yeah. these huge wheels. Yeah. Incredible. And it was those, incredible and those sight. amazing spoke wheels Incredible well. sight. But you never see women selling cars, do you? No, you, you don't. They buy lots of cars. Do you know why? Because in a car, there's nowhere for a woman to put a handbag. Well, that's, that's ludicrous. Another that's another thing it's we ludicrous. can discuss coming up very, very shortly. Yeah. We are the two Mike's. He's Mike Parry. I'm Mike Graham. There will be a podcast coming out. Uh, Parry Losophy coming up next. And so now, MG, you will not be able to understand this, for it is Latin. Well, it's actually Spanish, but it's sort of Latin Spanish, and it says everything about the way the people of the Mediterranean coast live their lives. It translates as how sweet it is to do nothing and then to enjoy a rest. Hmm. Parilosophy uh, this week. Uh, It seems Mm. to me that the Zen master... Um, has rather veered away from your earlier comments about uh, retirement. He seems to be suggesting that retirement is a good thing. 
No, no, not at all. I'm not suggesting that at all. What I'm doing is I'm picking out a philosophy mm. of uh, a number of nations. The Mediterranean coast, did Mediterranean you put coast. It? Now, Which Mediterranean coast are you talking about? Like Greece. Greece. Portugal. Uh -huh. Portugal Spain. doesn't have a Mediterranean coast. It's got an Atlantic coast. Yes. Right? Right. Spain. Mm. Greece. Yeah. Bit of France, maybe. Yeah. Um, and maybe even the south uh, Mediterranean coasts of sort of Morocco and Tunisia, OK? Do you mean the North Mediterranean coast? No, because that's the south of the Mediterranean, but north of Africa. Well, it's the north coast of Africa, though, isn't it? Yes, but I didn't say that. I said the south, um, south Mediterranean. Mediterranean coast, yeah. Right, yeah. OK, I'm with you. Because, you see, they have a different way of life. They do. Um, and they live... You know why they live longer than most people? Because, because they eat they, They've done of... studies, they eat lots of fresh vegetables, lots of fresh fruit... Olive oil. Lots of olive oil. That's Not right. frozen... No, 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 but they, they take it off the tree in their orchards and yeah. eat it on that day. Mm. But what I'm saying is... That, yeah, they do. In the Western world, in the Western world, so much of it is packaged and sent away for a week That's and all right. that kind of stuff. That's the problem. Now, let's get back to the, the philosophy here, because yeah. what I'm saying is, is that a better way of life than our way of life? Yeah. Because that's what my mantra was all about, is right. it? I say no, because Greece is in the state it's in because of the philosophy that people in those countries adopt a life. Uh, life. I so you don't think it's got something to do with the, the climate, though, as well? Of course it has. Of course it has. Manana, manana. Yeah. What does that mean? That means tomorrow. Exactly. Manana, manana. It's not Latin, though, is it? Well, it's a sort of Latin-Spanish derivative. Spanish-Latin. So Latin. don't do it today, we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Now, let me tell you how shocked I was the first time I ever went to Spain. Mm. It was with my parents. How shocked with the Spanish? I was not shocked with the Spanish. When all of a sudden I decided to go and visit a shop... At when did you first go to Spain, then? I suppose when I was about 13 or yeah. something like that. So it was kind of, yeah, when you when people started going on foreign holidays. Yes, that's right, yeah, package done. holidays, yeah. yeah. So when you, when you went to Mallorca, didn't you? Mallorca, that's right, right yeah. So and Mallorca's there. got even more of a kind of a manana, manana on the rest of Spain as well. Yeah, that's, yeah. Now, the you know, Balearics. I don't in any way want to be um, judgmental to people in other countries. Mm. As you quite rightly say, they have a lot of heat and we don't in the summer yeah. and all that. So they adapt to different lifestyles. But yeah. it means that their sense of urgency mm. to get things done, which drives economies like America and Germany and Japan, yeah. is not always there or relevant to the way people live right. their lives in these countries. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, the first time I go to Mallorca, I decided at lunchtime to go out and go visit a shop because uh -huh. it's too hot to sit around the swimming pool. Yeah. Why don't you just go in a pool? Well, because it's too hot, because it's on your head. No, it's not too hot to get into the pool. No, it is. The sun beats down on your head. Mm. And I suddenly found all the shops were closed. Yes, yeah, yesterday time. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking... What a lazy country. I quite like that. They only open half a day and yeah. then they've closed. Didn't realise that they open again at five o'clock. Yeah. And then stay until very late at night. Till 10 or 11 mm. o'clock at night. Mm. Different way of life. But yeah. that breeds within you a different approach to mm. life, which is what my mantra... Do you want me to read it again to you? Um, if you wish. You know, which is, uh, you know, because that was uh, pre-prepared. I've got it here. I wrote it down, studied it and translated what do you it. Mean, okay. pre-prepared? Well, you know, I, I, I studied the origins of it because right. everything has an orange. OK. Everything has an orange. Everything has an origin. 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 Yeah. Um, que dulce hasanada y luega descansar. How sweet, what does that actually mean? How sweet it is to do nothing and then have a rest. Yes. See well, what I mean? I think, I, think I, I have some sympathy with that. Word. How sweet it is because to do nothing the, I mean, and then have the a rest. So do well, you like doing nothing well, then having a rest? Well, I do, because I think one of the things that you have to now find uh, is uh, some kind of peaceful, happy medium. One of the things when we were younger, yeah. certainly, I mean, I used to work an awful lot more than I do now. Yeah. Because, you know, you were on this kind of treadmill, you know, you needed to make more money, you needed to get a house, yeah. you needed yeah. to provide for your family, you needed to you kind mean? of what become, you, um, you know, ambitious within the job that you, structure that you were in. Yeah. And I think as you get older, uh, you start to realise that some of those things are not as important, perhaps, as other parts of your life. Could be. And uh, I think one of the things that we've all realised um, is that, uh, you know, a work-life balance is mm. now the way to but go. But this is a contradiction in terms. Why? Well, why should you have a rest for doing nothing? That to me is is, is no. Is, but you've got you, you're kind of paranoid yeah. about resting. You, you don't of like to, you don't like to take holidays. You don't yeah. like to be doing nothing. Yeah. People describe you when they meet you for the first time as this little bundle of energy and somebody who just seems to be busy well, all the time. I, no, I, because I've no that's what you're that. like. Well, no, you are because did you, you you are always doing something. I mean, did you did you ever work out what the Simon and Garfunkel record Cecilia was all about? Cecilia. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I gave it any thought actually. 
Why? Don't you don't you worry about what records are about? Depends on the record. Really. I do. I never really gave Simon and Garfunkel an awful lot of attention. Oh, I like Simon they wrote, Garfunkel. They wrote some decent the songs. The boxer. And, I never, yeah, and, I never really, that. I never really thought of them as great philosophers. But Cecilia was all about, you know, applying yourself to Cecilia, life. Cecilia, I'm begging, I'm down on my knees, I'm begging you, please, to come home. Isn't it about his girlfriend? No, no, no. It's all about if you don't apply yourself to life, then life why will run about, away from why you. Why is it about that? Well, which particular part of the song? Um, right. Uh, making love in the afternoon. You're making love in the afternoon, With yeah. Cecilia up in her bedroom. Yeah. There's not much code there, really, is there? I got up to wash my face. Yeah. When I got back there, someone had taken my place. Yeah. That's the philosophy. Right. If so you don't stick so to the job, so to speak, I don't mean well, it. No. In the, I don't mean that in a smutty sense. If you, <laughs> if you don't, um, you know, so his if, girlfriend's if, cheating if, on him. In other words, no, no. Well, maybe. I mean, if you don't apply yourself to a situation, mm. concentrate on it, apply yourself, yeah. make sure that you're not, you know, being found wanting in any sort of situation, uh-huh. something like that. And that's your somebody fear, isn't it? Will take your place. But that's your fear. So, no, what fear? I don't have fear. You have a fear of I someone taking fear. your place. I can. That's sh- why you've never got married. That's why uh, you can't stop working. What are you on about? That's why you don't take any you holidays. Mad? Well, you no, mad? It's very simple. It's not. It is simple parilosophy. If I was to put you in front of a psychiatrist, they mm. would say, this man has a fear of going on holiday because he's worried when he comes back he won't have a job. Rubbish. He's worried about getting married because he's worried if he goes away from his wife, he'll come back and there'll be somebody taking his place. No, don't be it's silly. T- it's textbook. No, you're mad. It's textbook. You're, 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 you're mad. None, none of that applies. None of that applies. But the, the Cecilia record, I, you know, I endorse uh, almost entirely. I had no idea you were such a the, big Simon and Garfield. Funkle fan. Uh, yeah, pretty big. What really? did you think of uh, Bridge about, Over Troubled uh, Waters? Bridge Over Troubled Water? Yeah. Well, I thought that was it's quite a nice like song. like a bridge over trouble. Um, I prefer Parsley, Sage, Rosemary and Thyme. Thyme, yes. <laughs> yes, well, we, we did that last week. Um, in the clearing stands a boxer and a fighter by his trade. Yeah. And he carries a reminder... Boxing, and he carries a reminder Why have you got of every blow that hit him and knocked him down and nearly I killed I him. I think you've lost the It's plot something now. like that. Something like that. Anyway, look, the point is, mm. what I've been telling you why is... Are you, why are you hitting you your hand with a leather uh, device? Right, well, you, you simply don't understand the ins and outs of philosophy. If you did, you'd have understood by now mm. that most songs are philosophical... Allegories. Yes, allegories. Like the Bible. Well, maybe something like that, or... By the way, there's loads of people tweeting us over the last few days saying that they now use the word well to get out of any argument. Good, good. There's one guy who tweeted in and said his wife now completely uh, uh, lets him win an argument if he just goes well. Well, in the middle yeah. of when she's having to go at him. I mean, for instance, did you know that... Um, I've just been told to remind you of the time. I know that, yeah. But Paul McCartney's song, Blackbird, Blackbird mm. Sing in the Dead of Night. Yeah. Well, he claims now, and I'm no reason to he doubt him. He was at the Super Bowl, you know. Sorry? Did you see him at the Super no, Bowl? No, I didn't see him at the he Super Bowl, there. no. He's one, you know, one of the greatest um, composers of the second half of the 20th century, singing horrors. He says that Blackbird, which is all about a bird with a broken wing was about the civil rights movement in America. Yeah. You see, you've got, yeah, to, you've, you've got to understand these things, Mike. The thing is, philosophical chapters have been coming at you left, right and centre and trying to invade your brain yeah. for the last 35 years, but you've never seen them because you don't understand. You don't All understand right. anything about philosophy. Yeah. I do. Yeah. No, I I've, do. I've, I've I understand a, philosophy. I've actually studied it. And, uh, you and know, how it shapes your life. I don't want to show you. The lie, lie, no. lie, lie, lie. Well, that's just to give you time to think about the words you just heard. Everything and, you say is a and, lie. And, and that is about life. You know, life will knock it... you down unless you stand up and fight back, unless you get stuck in there. What, that... lie, lie, lie. Lie, 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 that's what it's about. How no, do you know no, that? No, 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 no. That's to give you, I've just told you, to give you thinking time to think about the words that mm. you've just digested, right. those brilliant words about, you know, in the clearing stands a boxer. What it means is you come to a clearing in a forest, there's a boxer, for you to go any further in life, it's a problem, you've got to take it on, you've got to beat mm. it, knock it to the ground, and move on down the next trail through the forest. Yeah. That's what it's all Have about. Have you ever got the lyrics wrong? Because when I, mean, I first heard that song, yeah. I thought it was something about Oxford. No. I thought it was in the clearing stands of Oxford. Well, you're an idiot, you know. You need well, to get no, sometimes, no, sometimes you get the words wrong, famously. Everybody does. No, 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 I don't think so. Um, anyway, listen, mate, um, if um, if you don't bring your children up properly anyway, yeah. they wouldn't be able to understand that song or any other song. Do you know, song? Right. Do you know why? That's why you're an expert in these matters, isn't it? I am an expert in you're these matters. You're an expert in um, uh, children. Yeah. You're an expert in uh, being a father. 
You're an expert in a whole host of stuff which well, you've never done. I study things. I study things, and the and the one thing that I know as a you know a man who has an eye on education in this country, yes. you know, quite a quite a keen eye. Yeah. Despite is, the fact is, that you gave it, up on your own education. No, I didn't give up my yes, own education. Did. I had a, I had a brilliant you, education. You, you quit the uh, um, uh, the, tra- the Nottingham Polytechnic. Well, only to go into another cultural route, which was journalism. Yeah, um, some people call in it which that. I've been extremely successful. Now, what I was going to say hey, is, by the way, before I forget, yeah. we have to get a t- quiz uh, subject for you for. Thursday, because we still don't have one. Right. So you need to tell us what you want to be quizzed on. Well, you think that's my problem? I thought you were the one who came up with the quiz. Well, no, you know? we normally get you to agree mm. to the subject. OK. You don't want me to be accused of being, uh, you know, gerrymandering the subject, do you? What about Battles of the Second World War? Battles of the Second World yeah. War. Yeah. OK. What about that? Battles of the Second World yeah. War. Yeah. Are you an expert in Battles of the Second World War? Well, I'm not going to tell you that, because, you see, you will then... Try and you know devise questions which are so difficult that no, not even a professor of history at Oxford University would be able to answer them. Well, you see our what I mean? professor of history in Mexico mm. is mm. a very keen listener to yeah. the show. He always yeah. says the quiz is brilliant. Yeah, I'm not sure. That Particularly he's... when it's about history. I'm not sure that he's a professor. Mm. But what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to say to you is, I'm trying to help you here. The bringing up of your children. Yeah. If you leave your Thank children. You very much. Now you told me. No, you told me last week that both your kids have now got iPads, right? Yeah. Father Christmas. Christmas brought them uh, right. iPads. Yeah. Okay. If they spend too much time on those iPads, they become completely non-communicative, mm. right? Yeah. They won't even be able to talk. Mm. They won't learn as they're growing that's up. That's not true. The power of conversation no, and to that's talk. That's not true. They will be almost really struck dumb. Do you really think that mm. anybody associated with me would mm. not learn about the art of conversation? Well, I you mean, know, I talk all the time. Yeah, but yeah. The, only, the, the least amount of talking yeah. that I actually do yeah. is when I'm sitting here with you. Oh, really? Because is I that can't right? get a word in edgewise. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, but you see, the problem is because you nip out every seven minutes to have a cigarette, your children. Every seven minutes? Yeah. You don't think that's a bit of an exaggeration? No, I don't. Your children think that you've just Once abandoned them. Once an hour. And, and that's why you bought them the iPads. To keep that being, that's I why did I... not buy the iPads. They were provided by Father Christmas. Right, OK, OK. So Father Christmas brings along the iPads yes. for your children. That's great. Your children are then completely consumed by the iPads. You no, do nothing as a responsible not parent to rubbish. say you can only use that iPad for one hour a day. Do you? Do mm-hmm. you say that? That's exactly what we do. In fact, uh, not only... Not, it's well, actually I've just given less... you that idea. Now no, you're you going to adopt it, no, aren't less you? than one hour a day. Oh, yeah? Because before they had iPads, they had different sorts of tablets. We had, yeah. we, uh, Father yeah. Christmas bought them different sorts of tablets. So, right. we, so right. we had to bring in mm. that kind of discipline because mm. you're quite right. Children become obsessed with the, these things. Yeah. As most people do. I mean, you go on a train now uh, yes. and you think about maybe what happened 20 years ago or mm. less. And now all you see is people sitting on trains looking at their, uh, uh, their information device. They're either playing totally a game, agree. they're either on Twitter, you know, they're not talking to each and other. And do you know what? In it's te- not, so it's not just children we're talking yeah. about here. And in ten years' time, Mike, millions of people have curvature of the spine yeah. for doing well, that. I'll and tell I mean that seriously. Worse. People think I'm joking, but people lean forward on their seat and mm. they look into their... And, and, and it is putting enormous pressure on their neck muscles... Yeah on the lumbar position of their body, yeah. on their ribs and everything, mm. people are literally killing themselves by this is why, spending all day looking at their mobile phones. This is why now the, mm. the, the technology companies are trying to come up with different ways of doing it, like so you can have glasses, so you can look at screens in there. But, but it's the same with when you go out yes. and you see couples in restaurants. And I've actually seen a couple having dinner together in a mm. restaurant, and mm. both of them are on their mobile phone. Not talking to each yeah, other. Yeah, don't communicate. I'm like, why are you bothering going out for dinner? You you can tell they're married because that's what they do. Whereas you new know, new loves, so to speak, will animatedly talk to each other over yeah. dinner and get upset if yes. the one brings out a phone. Yeah, exactly. Now the other thing is, no, I mean, you're right to raise this about kids, but as you would imagine, yeah. I'm very responsible about it. Well, I like to think you are, but I, I have to I remind you because I feel I have an obligation to do that. Yeah. So, as I take up a good part of your time in your working week, I don't need to be neglecting your children no, because of, of me. No, now, I, what they have is like they have almost like reward time to yeah. spend on their. IP pads if they've done something good. If they, if they haven't done anything good, mm. uh, then they don't get them. Now, when they get older, then you've got a second problem, Losing right? my hair. Uh, yeah, that's right. Many yeah. years from now. Yeah, yeah. Will you still be sending me a Valentine, a birthday, birthday greeting, greetings. a bottle of wine? A bottle of wine. What are those words mean, quarter to three. If I... Would you lock the would door? Would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still need me? And we know the rest. Mm. Now then... Yeah, look, but what does it mean? Because you've been telling me that all these words have different meanings. Oh, well, that's easy what that means. Yeah. Um, what happened was, when Paul McCartney was 13, his mother very sadly died, right? And it was a huge blow to him yeah. for two reasons. Firstly, he loved his mother very much yeah. and all that. But the family were uh, stretched financially and he, you know, worried that, that they might lose their home because mm. they could pay the rent and all that kind of stuff right. for the house. Ever since then, he has had an absolute, not an obsession, but certainly one of the things he's always craved for in life is the family unit. Yeah. So, for instance, he wrote about um, when I'm 64, mm. and it was all about sitting around the hearth place and all that. Do you remember the song he also wrote about uh, Ubla Dee, Ubla Da? Yeah. And one of the lyrics was, you know, uh, having two kids... Um, um, 
you know, Molly was a dancer in a, in a market. Uh, in, no, Somebody sorry. Somebody was a singer in a band. Uh, Molly was a dancer in a band. Uh, no, no, no. A singer in a band. Yeah, a singer in a band. And then they had two kids and all that. That was about domesticity, yeah. OK? Yeah. When the Beatles broke up, he bought what he said was a little cottage down in Peasmarch yeah. in uh, Sussex, that's near right. you. Very near Rye. Th- that's very near Rye, because he wanted a little family unit and they'd sit there and that's when they became vegetarians, yeah. watching the sheep gamble around in mm. the fields, you mm. know. And he also bought a place up in the Mulliken Tire. And it was always been about the necessity to have family. For instance, um, sadly, when his, uh, his wife Linda died... I think they only ever spent one night apart in 30 years of marriage. And that's the sort of guy he was, massive on family Mm. and all that. And that's where When I'm 64 came from. You know, will we all still be a family unit when I'm 64? Anyway, look, let me get back to... It's not that subliminal, really, is it? Eh? It's not that subliminal, really, is it? No, but you still need to link one song to another to work out what his his, uh, thinking pattern is. Mm. Now then, um, the thing is, when the kids get to teenagers, right... Yeah. They will spend so much time on their smartphones, it will affect their sleeping patterns, and that's when they become irritable and might even um, start inheriting mental problems because their whole lives will be shaped by what they're well, looking at on their smartphones. Hopefully, by the time your children have become teenagers, you've given them a reasonably good basis in uh, what is kind of, you know, the right way to live, and uh, then you can just let them kind of grow. The yep. idea is that they kind of become responsible for their own lives and they become, as they get older, yep. um, actually uh, very interesting young people. Yep. And you can't really, by the time they're teenagers, start ordering them around because that doesn't work. I've got to give you facts and figures. Teenagers who reported using screens more than four hours a day have a 49% greater risk of taking longer than an hour to fall to sleep because their brain is so scrambled. Uh-huh. Those who used a computer smartphone... Well, I think this applies to grown-ups as well, though. Maybe. A computer smartphone or MP3 player in the hour before bed were more likely to take longer than an hour to fall asleep. Yeah. In adults, it deemed problematic to take more than 31 minutes to fall asleep. If you've got that, you've got well, a problem. Well, you see, one of the things that you mm. shouldn't do, mm. and this is what people recommend, medical people recommend, is you should not take your, your information device, phone, whatever you yeah. want to call it, tablet, anywhere near your bedroom. Yeah. And you should leave it outside so that you're not constantly kind of, you know, using it while you're actually trying to sleep. No, that's mad. I mean, I don't use it while I'm asleep, but... Well, no, but I bet you keep it by the side of the bed. Of course I do, because yeah, well, might want to ring well, me. Yeah, but you see, that's why you can't rest no, properly. That's no, no. why you can't sleep properly. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you what. Because you're constantly on edge. No, I'd be on edge if the phone was in another room right. and I thought somebody's trying well, so to ring me. And, 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 so you've got, you've got I, the problem that you're just describing children no, shouldn't have. No, I'm not. Because I'm not staring at it all the time. It makes a noise when it rings. I bet you And if are. I'm lying there and I hear a noise, I, I say you, to myself, I bet oh, you if you're my waiting. mobile phone is ringing. I better answer it because somebody's probably trying to get hold of me. Yeah, but if you're on Twitter quite a lot, which we both are, yeah. you know, there are times when you have to just have some downtime. Otherwise, oh, yeah. otherwise you spend your time entirely just being occupied by what people are saying. I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do no, that. No, it's very don't tempting. I'm not, I'm not saying mm. that you're, you know, alone in that. I think that's yeah. what everybody's yeah. doing. Well, maybe they do. But, I mean, I'm not that daft. Do you see what I mean? I've got a... I've got what you could call a secular mind. Secular? Yes. Well, how do you mean that? Well, I can separate it from the rest of my body. So it's That's not... not what secular means, though. Of course it does. Secular means it's not, I'm not associated with religion, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about in a more metaphorical sense. You, you know what I mean? Really? Yeah, that it's not associated with the rest of my body. Yeah. You see what I mean? Like your shirt. I, can, I can separate your it. Well, I'm not, not going to wear this shirt again. I've had so shirt. much stick over this shirt. This shirt's going in the bin when yeah. I get home. Why don't you make a deck chair out of it? You put it out on your uh, patio. Oh, oh no, you can't put it on your patio because your patio is still a complete mess, right? It's like downtown Baghdad. My still. Patio, I'm afraid, yeah. What about the washing machine? Uh, washing machine is being is still attended to on Friday. Well, somebody's going to take away the old one. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. There's some brickwork needs doing. Nightmare. Um, now, uh, you might say to me, you might say to me, well, look, that shirt, if you don't w- want it, why don't you get your housekeeper to wash it and then take it to Oxfam? Yeah, I'm you not could going do to. that. I'm not going to. Why not? Well, I just don't believe in all this stuff about, you know, giving so much away. I think that the proliferation of charity shops in the high street yeah. in most towns is leading to a commercial downturn. Because if you get stuff well, in a charity no, shop, it's, it's, no, it's kind you get of, stuff in a charity of, shop, you're not going to go around. to a proper shop. No, it's the other way around, isn't it? One it's of not the other reasons, way around. No, one of the reasons why all the charity mm. shops are in uh, high streets yeah. now is because very few other businesses can actually make any money well, that might, in those places. That might have been two or three years ago. It but is. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the case now. How many charity shops in your high street? Uh, I would say maybe four or five. Yeah, it's a lot, isn't Something it? like that, there mm. is a lot. But the thing is... And a lot of pound lands as well. There's a couple of pound lands. thing is, my charity shops aren't charity shops Have you anymore. never bought anything from a charity shop, then? Yeah, I have. What did you buy? Um, like, things like, for instance... I bet that, that some of the presents you've handed me in the past. No, no, but I have bought a wooden car. I bought a wooden car. Really? Yeah, it was great. What, to drive it? around it? No, not to drive <laughs> around it, you fool. I bought a wooden car as, a, as an ornament... <laughs> 
for my What's table a, down on the coast. It was a beautiful wooden car. It was a beautiful wooden car. What kind of car? Uh, like a 1932 Bugatti or something like oh, that yeah? with an open roof and all that kind mm, of stuff. You know what nice. I mean? It's made of polished wood. Is it wood. painted? It's, no, it was painted in varnish. It's brown and it's varnished. It's beautiful. How big is it? I've still got it. I would say it's at least a foot long right. and it's about five or six Why inches off the ground. I liked it. It was great. I, I love it. It's fantastic. You know what's going to happen, don't you? What? One day that's going to turn up as some kind of present for one of my kids. No, 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 yeah, not at is. all. Yeah, it is. Mind you, if I saw another one, I would buy them one because they're very attractive. Well, don't. They and don't I've been looking for another car. one ever since. They, and in don't fact, want, they do not want a wooden car. In fact, I've bought an aeroplane. I've bought a wooden, polished, varnished aeroplane. Great. It's don't beautiful. give me that either. I'm going to hang it from the roof above the car. Does it fly? Of course, it doesn't fly. What's you the point fool? of having a wooden plane? Well, because it looks great. Honestly, it's a real work of art. You should get a proper wooden no. car to drive around. It no, no. really suit you, actually. Oh, don't be ridiculous! It'd be brilliant. You can't have a wooden It'd be like car. like Colonel Blimp driving around in a wooden car. We can, a... make, we can have proper wheels. But don't just be ridiculous, the rest of it Colonel Blimp. You see, you've got no appreciation of art. All I'm saying is, you know, I appreciate the fine things in life, and uh, I look, I look around. Uh, when I was first building my property portfolio, oh, yeah. I used to cho- go to charity shops all the time. Man of the people. Yeah, and buy... Slum landlord. Yeah, and used to buy all sorts of, uh, you know, grotty cockery. Rubbish. Crockery. Yeah. Um, uh, ornaments. Did you have those awful paintings that you put yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, loads yeah. of those, cr- you know, yeah. really grotty paintings. Yeah, like ten for a five. Crockery, salt and pepper cellars, all yeah. this kind of stuff. And they're always clean, I mean, in fairness. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I'm saying about charity shops. They're not really charity shops anymore. They're actually high street retailers yeah. who retail stuff, a lot of it which is new, but you still get it cheaper. Yeah. So I used to buy... I, I used to buy... I used to buy um, in fact, I used to go to the, the... time, by the way. I used to go to the Salvation Army place yeah. and buy all the furniture and get them to ship it over. The homeless used to come and ship it over for me. I used to pay them for it. Shocking. Yeah. Absolutely shocking. Mm. Anyway, we'll develop that uh, later on tonight, of yeah. course. Uh, there's loads more. There's a Liverpool game tonight. Uh, we'll be bringing you live commentary of that. Mike Porky Parry will be back uh, at 2am tomorrow. There will be a podcast out of the two mics a little bit later on, of course. Thank you very much, Mr Parry. Uh, enlightening as ever. Uh, uh, tomorrow night it's going to be Porky Vision, of course. A lot of people saying you uh, uh, should be watching this Fortitude show. So I hope you have a look oh, at I've that. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah. Oh, well, I've don't got tell a view me about on that. Now. I've don't got t- a view don't on that. tell me about it now. Mm. Uh, there isn't time. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling as busy as a bottle of champagne podcast from the two